Any of us who were there in the last uh, workshop? Can I see the hands? Stretched out? Yes. Thank you. Uh, let me give you the scheme of the class today and then uh, my basic, uh, uh, my basic uh, focus area for today's class is to explain to you how uh, how we are going to have the, the course. Believing uh, fully that uh, most of us, most of us uh, have uh, decided over the optional subject. Because uh, many times students come up with this question, which option is better? I do not know. Uh, every optional has got its own strengths and weaknesses, whatever. And then every individual has got his or her own taste. Certain things may taste good to you, certain may not. So that chemistry must match with the subject. And uh, I look at it as not simply a chemistry, but maybe there should be much more than that. There should be of the or a relationship of the order of a love. Unless otherwise you love your subject, you will not <coughs> be able to get to it. <coughs> Many times, you know, we, we also uh, say this to the student, the way you hold your book, the way you hold the newspaper close to your body and how your body language towards your books also communicates something to the book that you are reading. Uh, you should be held much more intimately than your own lover. Only then the uh, subject would automatically enter your body physic. Now having this, I mean, the basic idea that you know, we are going to go with this particular thing, I have to say this, that you know, uh, every batch of young girls and, and boys, uh, they keep on adding you know, information, adding knowledge, adding questions to our courses. So we see to it that every course has got its own you know, additional stuff. Uh, one other question, see I am trying to pick up several questions that students have been asking in the last 10 days or so, especially after the prelim exam, you know, when people think that now is the time we start with. Uh, one common question that I found is, uh, how many months you need to study the subject? And second thing they were asking was that, uh, uh, what should be the volume that I'll have to study? Uh, see, there, there are two ways especially when it comes to how much time we require. Uh, in the classroom, we do about three and a half hours of course, three and a half uh, months of course, you know, roughly. Uh, that comes to, as I was saying in my previous class to some of you who were there in that lecture, that you know, uh, anything less than three hours doesn't uh, satisfy uh, you know, my, my gluttonous attitude. Uh, so, three hours is the minimum that I want in the class. So, maybe average may come up to about 2 hours, 30 minutes or 2 hours, 45 minutes. And uh, this should go on for about uh, 90 lectures or so. Uh, technically speaking, uh, I should uh, be having a minimum of 250 to 260 clock hours in the class so that uh, I communicate to you the discipline in a reasonable way. Second thing is, uh, see, in, uh, in the question that uh, they presented as, uh, what is the, see, everybody would like to have a shortcut, actually. We do not want to uh, go that extra stretches. So people say, are those 250 questions sufficient? You know, if I'm writing questions and answers for 250. And then uh, people say that, uh, does the class material suffice? Whatever you mention uh, in the class is sufficient. Or maybe, uh, does the printed material you know, work out? Uh, and could, do I need to do anything more than that? And some of the students also say that, uh, we hear that you know, there's a lot of memorizing. So sh can we memorize and go vomit in the exam and get the marks, whatever? Uh, I would put it this way. <coughs> um, I am basically an academician. Um, whether uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I do not know. I was caught up in UPSC. 
Uh, but then uh, the academic uh, bent of mind always continues. So, um, my basic intention uh, in the class would be to give a conceptual clarity to the student. So, there are three, four things that you should keep in mind. One is absolute conceptual clarity. Do not have any kind of doubts in mind. See, if I am using one, one term in the class, uh, without explaining that particular term, I should not be ending your course. See, certain terms I might be using in today's class, I may not be explaining them fully. It might take a bit of time, maybe a one week or ten days before which the term becomes much more clearer to you. But then my effort will be whatever concepts are there in your syllabus per se, they have to be properly understood by you. And uh, I am open to any kinds of questions in the class. I do not belong to that genre of our teachers who discourage students from asking questions. And uh, let me tell you, I do not uh, uh, say that, see, my flow will be interrupted and hence you don't ask questions. It's not that way. Uh, it is always like, you know, the more you ask questions, the more information, the more inputs I will be able to. Uh, so th that's the reason why we say, you know, the teachers are like performing artists. Uh, the more uh, the encouragement comes from the audience, the crowd, the more claps are there. I mean, kind of. He, they asked me not to speak in Telugu, so I thought I would. It's like taking away my no, soul from my body because I live with the Telugu and I kind of, but then, okay, fine, kind of. I know pretty well that after the course, people from, from Srinagar would start writing poetry in Telugu because that has happened. So I, I know that. So, any doubts are there, feel free. Uh, it is something like this because I'll have to give the basics first. Um, third question people were asking, what are the books that you should be? Sir, we would be circulating the first basic stuff, something like this. Two booklets will be given to you. One I call a planner actually. This is called a planner, which you would carry to the class every day. There's nothing in this. There are only you know, blank pages there, which you would be filling up based on what you are actually doing on that particular day in the class. Because you know, never do we cover the subject from in chronological order, chapter 1 to 12 kind of a thing. That doesn't, uh, you know, I, I don't savor that. Even uh, as a student, when I had to you know, study any book, I would don't do it from the chapter one, maybe I would always do from the last chapter. So uh, that looks to be an upside down kind of a study, but then, uh, and this also helps in several ways. One is when I'm making you fill this particular thing, which you would uh, understand it later, I am also adding certain sources to uh, the topic that we are going to study in the class what could be the, you know, apart from what we do in the class, various other things. And also there are certain writing practices which I would be incorporating here, which you would be submitting from time to time, that will also be here. So you, your uh, level of study, whether you have completed whatever was uh, assigned to you by the teacher, that will be understood from this particular thing. So this is one. Uh, this, so the moment you enter the batch, this will be circulated to you. Second thing will be this. This is something like a Bible, a mini Bible rather. Uh, this is actually the question and answer booklet, uh, which uh, is much sacred than your own soul. You are not supposed to lose touch with this one. Uh, because uh, many times what happens is, though the questions look to be one and the same, there would be slight modification which can be understood only through a close look at the question. One other question people were asking was, maybe before going to continuation of that, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, uh, we hear that there are particular set of questions in anthropology, uh, very direct kind of a questions. Uh, can we, uh, through the method of rote, uh, uh, can we do this kind of a thing? Thankfully, the optional of anthropology is coming out of that kind of a tendency. They have started experimenting more. 
Maybe if the question was asked two years ago, I would say that maybe partially fine. Now they are trying to experiment. They are trying to go at some places, uh, detour they are taking, slightly a diversion kind of a thing. Sometimes they are going much deeper into certain things. So it is not that you know, uh, there would be altogether 100% direct questions. But maybe a 10 to 15% indirect questions will be there. They have to be there. They should increase also so that the person, the student with the actual stuff and understanding would be selected from among the crowd. Uh, as the course goes on, we would be explaining you the, the chemistry of it and how you will have to go about with this. Let me also talk about how exactly the notes and other things go on. Um, sir, there are four major things through which your material for the exam would be communicated to you. One, of course, is the classroom, uh, whatever you call lecture or talking. While, while we talk in the class, uh, there would be several narratives that we keep adding. Uh, the narratives may mostly be in the form of stories alone. Uh, and do not take them as mere stories. Because when I am narrating a story that is from the experience of some anthropologist in the field, uh, and uh, the narrative would have certain key terms, key examples. So each and every damn thing that we mention in the class, that has to be there somewhere in your, in your notebook. So generally what I mentioned to the student is there's all, there should also be a particular way in which you should be writing the note also. Uh, there are two ways in which students write, two or three ways in which they write. One is that when I am speaking certain things, there would be, can I have the book? Uh, they might be writing from one side of the notebook and then uh, the dictation formal may be written from the other side. This is one way. And I do not know how many of us have the habit of drawing margins to the notebook. I mean, if an intermediate fellow, undergraduate fellow who is planning to study for UPSC, first thing we tell is, first you learn to draw the margins in the notebook. Then you can start studying. That's a different story. Now, because you are already grown up people, you may feel too slightly lazy on that front. You can give this job to your junior fellow in the neighborhood, saying that, Aap ye karo, IAS ban jaoge. he would do it for you. Don't, yeah, or maybe somebody at home, you know, you can give an ice cream and get it done. Two margins are very much necessary. The second way in which students do is whatever, you know, description, explanation that we are giving, they might be doing in the margin on the right hand side. Generally, right hand margins are bigger than the left hand side. Uh, do not be stingy about the pages. Uh, kind of a thing. You will have to have certain margins so that, see, when I am doing one particular topic in today's class, I will not be ending that in today's class. Maybe it would take three and a half months for me to finish the topic. So that, you know, you would have some kind of a possibility of scribbling around. Uh, this is one as I am di as discussing things with you. Second thing will be dictation. I am known for dictating uh, uh, pretty reasonably good speed. Uh, Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, you don't have time to scratch yourself also. So speed, I am I'm very much particular about. Initially, I might seem to be going slightly slowly, uh, but I would want you to go with that speed so that in the examination, there would not be a problem. There, no, speed test is also there and hence. There's the second one. Whatever you are going to write here, in your very beautiful handwriting. Keep it to your own self. Be extremely selfish. That's very important, especially when it comes to UPSC preparation. Not even to your closest of the friends. You should be. Later, you would be repenting that you have written the notes with three hours every day, the torture in the class for 90 days. And then uh, uh, somebody else who had taken your notes has passed the exam, and you are writing for the next generation. We shall not be having, you know, that five-year plan kind of a thing, you know, especially if you are coming with an optional subject under me. I do not want to see the faces again and again in the class. 
just imagine for three months you are seeing me for 90 days, three hours every day. Nobody would want to see a Shahrukh Khan also 90 days continuously. So, once if you are doing, do it thoroughly. Give it the maximum. And sir, the third thing. Apart from this, this is the primary thing. See, we divide uh, the study content into two parts. One we call the basic content and the advanced content. This is the very basic thing. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, as when it comes to this particular subject, not everything is there in one book. That's where maybe the teacher becomes necessary. Otherwise, the teacher is redundant there. If everything would have been there in three or four books, everybody would have done from the three or four books. Uh, but I think that's where the teacher comes into picture. The basic material is this one. The second material will be in the printed form that we are going to give to you. And the tertiary material, the third material, which we call slightly an advanced kind of a stuff to read, would be provided to you in the soft copies. These are the three basic things. And fourth will be t from time to time whenever I feel like scribbling something out of my frustration in the form of some blog or something, I would ask you to go and study and break your heads there. That could be another one. These are the four things. Even in the textbooks, because <clears throat> the moment we start the course, the other questions that might come to, your, to, come, come to me would be the list of books that we will have to study or purchase or do both. I have in this particular booklet given some basic and some advanced books. I do not want you to purchase any advanced books right now, unless otherwise you would want to maintain a library back home. And these are also, you know, quite a large numbers actually. Uh, generally, this particular list, in addition to that, I would give you several other titles. You should be knowing all those titles in order to write better answers in the exam. Because many times in this subject what happens is, whenever you are explaining something, there comes a necessity of mentioning who must have mentioned it in which book. So for that particular purpose, you should be knowing the books, the titles and the writers, even if you haven't read those books. I can confidently say that there are people who scored some of the highest marks without reading a single book of, from there. But then, I would recommend this so that you have, there are two reasons why I recommend it. One is, the book sales must happen. Second is, uh, you should have that feel of the original reading. After you have read the original book, you should come back and say that, okay, class material is much more exhaustive. Then I said, okay, fine then. Because tomorrow when you go to the interview, I do not want you to have wide face when the board asks you, what are the books that you have read? Please do not use my name there. I do not want a publicity there so that I would be screwed up later. So just remain to these are the certain basic books I would mention. Even in the material that I am going to circulate to you, apart from the first booklet that I said, I categorize the material also, printed material also, into basic and advanced material. As the name suggests, basic is the one, by default you will have to study. And remember sir, if something is there in the print, in the form of a note, that will not be there in the classroom. And if I am giving a very detailed note in the class, that will not be there in the printed note. And uh, if these two things, if I think that they will have to be taken to another level, I would be providing in the soft copies, which would be generally, you know, the things that I must have written recently, or they might have been extracted from some kind of a journal from the recent past, etc. That's an advanced reading. And then, uh, coming to the other question, how many days or months or years are required to finish the course? Um, <clears throat> As I always say to the student, do not wait for the teacher to complete the course in order for you to begin preparation. Because many people come up with this question, when will you finish so that I can start? Uh, I think that's a very discouraging kind of a thing. As long as you are here uh, for, for the three and a half, four months of time, the formula is very, very clear, not simply here in any optional subject, any, any subject in general studies or whatever the 
uh, the basic rule is very much same that you know, if you are sitting here for a three hours of time back home three hours of reading is mandatory that's the basic minimum actually so if you are, if i'm doing a three hour class here i expect you to do that three hour thing sometimes what might happen is if i'm giving you some kind of an assignment to submit uh, the single assignment single question might take about you know three or four hours of time but it doesn't matter because ultimately when you are going to the exam that piece of paper which you have produced uh, by yourself if that is there you in the exam you need not have to blink for a minute you are straight away writing that because i must have corrected it i must have suggested you know changes uh, that have to be incorporated the same paper you are going to reproduce there that saves your time now coming to your writing practice uh, <clears throat> Every, every batch, you know, I find this question from at least some of the boys and girls. Uh, do you have tests in writing practice? I can uh, say it with a thumping uh, thing that, you know, the more a student is asking in the beginning about the test, the less he would be writing later. Uh, I, I have to say this, the three kinds of things. One we say uh, self-tests. Uh, self-tests are the ones, of course, I give you for your self-evaluation. I would be giving you the basic key there and what, what should be the approach of the answer, etc. What are the facts to be incorporated? That's a self-test. Then you, we have assignments. Assignments would be consisting of a list of questions. It's more or less like a question paper, a full question paper. But then when I say assignment, you are going to refer to several material that, uh, or maybe something that I have asked you to read from a textbook, etc. And you are going to prepare an answer there, prepare several answers and submit to us. This is the assignment. So in the whole lot of the course of three and a half months, maybe you would be having four or five big assignments. And then the third writing thing is the full-fledged test. Those are 250 mark tests. Uh, see, my objective uh, is uh, to complete the course by the end of September. Um, and suppose somebody is uh, writing the main exam this time, they should be approaching me. Uh, so that you know, I can make some kind of an arrangement for them that you know they are safely delivered uh, well before the date of their you know, exam. Uh, but generally, you know, my idea is that I would be finishing the course by the end of uh, September. September 29th is the main exam commencing this year. So if somebody is writing for them, we would be giving an extra push through various mechanisms. But uh, otherwise, if you are writing, you know, planning for the next year. Uh, during this course of three and a half, four months of time, if I feel that, you know, one particular section I have almost finished and I can give a full test on that, you would be put across to that particular test. Otherwise, most of the tests would happen once you are finishing that course. So September end, if I'm finishing, you would be given about two months of time. So, uh, because I strongly understand and believe that there would definitely be some loose ends here and there that would take some time to you know, deal with. So two months of time we give. So October, November, by the end of November, we would be formally closing uh, your complete uh, session along with the tests, etc. This is what is the capsule. Take a timely capsule you know, in a proper way, it will be done. And then uh, another question people would ask is, uh, we are going to write the main exam next year, 2019, then what? I have this very <coughs> popular statement through which I describe myself that once in contact, always in contact. Uh, once you are a student, you are always a student. Uh, so what we do is, uh, even if you have passed out of this particular course, you would be constantly be uh, exposed to different kinds of developments, newer things that are happening, so that your content can be enhanced. So before your uh, main examination, generally before every main examination for that matter, we release uh, certain sets of questions for a last minute you know, brush through. Many people actually, many students bank on that list of questions. You know, they would be waiting for that list of questions which might be consisting of, say, you know, about a 75 uh, or 80 questions, small and big, every, big everything put together. 
Mm, there are certain much more enterprising students. They would say, they would bring that list to me of those 80 questions that I give. Isme se thode mark kar do so that, no, I can't do anything about them. Nobody can save them. Eight, but then we see that from that 80 or 70 list, along with your test series, you should be able to get about 90% of the questions in your exam. Uh, if, not, uh, if not in total, to, to a major extent. So if you are writing the exam in 2019, you can go for another test series later, but then the whatever content additions are there, from time to time we would be doing some small capsules like four lecture capsule, 10 lecture capsule would be provided so that, you know, if at all any contemporary things are there, I would keep on updating. This is how the course goes on. Is that fine? Uh, then, the next thing. So that's what I was thinking of actually in today's class. <coughs> and I also have to give you the sequence in which I'm going to do your course. Sequence you will have to keep with you so that, you know, you would, uh, uh, you would also be knowing, you know, what is going to come later. It's not like a surprise and shock tomorrow you are entering the class and then a bombshell is coming on you. It's not like that. You already know. Right now, I don't suggest you to purchase any books. Take time, a couple of days more. That thing must sink into your mind that you have taken the optional subject. Um, uh, and then maybe after two or three days, if you are having some kind of another thing in mind, this book should not go waste which you have already purchased. It would go anyway into a second sale only. So take time. Don't, don't be you know, in a rush to do benefit to the publishers. I start with the first one rather. And also I will tell you, uh, I will try to explain certain one or two other questions which people ask. Mm. One question that I was facing the other day was that uh, mm. whether sociology and anthropology are one and the same. It's a popular question. Many people were asking these days. Why should I take anthropology? Why should I take anthropology? I do not know. But then, what is the difference between them? Uh, and uh, there was one very hilarious way of uh, explaining. Somebody was putting it this way, that sociology was the mother of anthropology. And hence, part of sociology, if you are studying, the daughter is covered. So, it, it, can it be like, you know, first three or four lectures of a particular topic in sociology, they can be called anthropology. I'm afraid not. If you compare the syllabus for that matter, if you compare the syllabus, there might be several commonalities there. But then, uh, the basic difference exists in the way you approach the things from whose perspective you are going to write and uh, what stand you will have to take irrespective of what the government's stand is, what stand an anthropologist has to take, that is different from maybe what a sociologist would be doing. Here the answers would not come through logic or rationality. You will eventually understand from the classes of anthropology. Sir, Nindariye, if you are feeling sleepy, slap yourself. Or ask your neighbor to slap you. We are going to have several of these episodes in the class. Because I understand class of three hours is torturous. Very, very torturous. I understand very thoroughly. It's not a film of three hours where, no? you are thoroughly entertained. But then I am sure, and I always aim at that, that by the end of the three hours, you should go fresh out of the class. After three hours of thorough entertainment, if you go out, you should be able to attend any other class of three hours. No? Uh, so, kind of. <laughs> Try to be as attentive as possible in the class. I don't say that 100% attention, but then. Especially do not sleep when you are writing. <laughs> when you are taking down uh, the dictation, do not doze off. 
But then I have seen students who write the best way when they're sleeping. <laughs> my own husband, who was my student long time back, uh, <laughs> he was the person who would sleep the most in the class. But then later I understood that if you have a sufficient sleep, either outside or in the class, you definitely make it through the exam. And hence, maybe he made it. So there's no problem. I don't stop anybody from sleeping. But then while you're writing, you be slightly cautious. I was really aghast when I was looking at those notebooks. How can somebody who was sleeping could write this way? Maybe that's an art that he must have got through the years. <coughs> Coming here. So I was giving the difference between sociology and anthropology. You have the syllabus document with you? Yes. Look at chapter one, paper one, chapter one. In the second segment there in chapter one, paper one, there is a mention of relationship with other disciplines. If you have got the syllabus, fine. If you haven't got the syllabus, very fine. Yeah. The people who have the syllabus would look at the syllabus, you look at them. Can I, can I talk? Oh. There is this question, relationship between anthropology and other social sciences or those sciences, these sciences, etc. One of them is sociology there. Why I am pointing out this is, from whichever topic that I start in the syllabus, in the talk that we are going to have, we would be incorporating several other things which might be existing in different parts of your syllabus. So you would be gathering information about some other part of the syllabus while you are doing a topic X. And even before I thoroughly do that particular topic, I am sure you will be able to write a reasonable answer on that with this kind of a chit chat that happens. I call it a chit chat only. What we are going to have in the triads is a chit chat only, plainly. Many times you wonder whether we have done any anthropology in the class today. But uh, the answer lies when you see the exam. I will give you one example. Look at chapter 6, paper 1. <clears throat> as you go down, as you run through that syllabus chapter, uh, you have somewhere there uh, called uh, symbolic anthropology, symbolism in anthropology, symbolic school. Huh? Symbolic. Any names that are mentioned there? Hanji, Hanji. What's the last name you read? Geertz, a very popular fellow. I'm not teaching any anthropology today, okay? Uh, in the first uh, three or four lectures, with the random saying out of names, etc., you would really wonder that in the first week itself, you learned so much of anthropology. Remember, this is the first name that I am introducing in the class, Clifford Geertz. He is considered to be a symbolic anthropologist, a British fellow. And uh, somebody who had studied a society called uh, Alur in Indonesia. Some of you who must have come from the geography subject, you must have heard of this Alur Island there. Alur. I'm not really worried about his theory, grand theories, etc. My only intention of bringing him into the class now is to say that even chit chats can help you in writing answers. So if you go back to the, uh, the question paper booklet once you, it is supplied to you, 2016 if I could recall, there was this question about Clifford Geertz. The question was uh, to explain how he had uh, studied and he had presented the cockfights. You understand cockfights? Cockfights, huh? Come Sankranti, you have so many cockfights, people from that region, you might be betting, betting Mangaraja, so many uh, mm, things you might be participating in and the people spend lakhs of rupees on, on 
uh, each of those cocks and then uh, they are auctioned also after the fight is over they are auctioned. The auction might go into lakhs of rupees. The sumptuous, if at all you are somebody who participate in them, I don't hesitate accepting uh, the meat once you have it. Do not forget me after Sankranti. That is the benefit of being a teacher. <coughs> when it comes to this, see in one of our classes we were actually explaining how Geeds was looking at the cockfight. I was actually comparing Indian cockfights with uh, Indonesian cockfights and the whole lot of description on which we did not take a formal note actually. We were explaining how he was looking at it. And for that class, whoever was there in the class, they could easily answer that question. At the time when I was describing, I am sure people must not have thought the significance of that. Let me tell you once again, this one, one, one very interesting thing. Um, uh, somehow, mm, an anthropology was an accident for me. Like how many relations in our life are accidents. Uh, my father was a forest service person. He was in a tribal thing, so I got into tribal thing, and then somehow I was a tribal girl actually, and then uh, and I continued with this business of anthropology. And uh, in the process, what happens is, um, somewhere uh, the tribal tendencies are, you know, I, I cannot get out of the tribal tendencies. When I'm describing certain things, things might look to be very absurd for the people. Most of us might be the urban lot, who must not have stepped out of the urban centers. Uh, many people do not even know how a village might look like. They're so very unfortunate. Forget about the tribal there. Unless otherwise you have that kind of an exposure, a relishing it becomes difficult. That's the reason why, why what I do is, from every batch to batch, I see to it that I try to give as many newer examples and newer studies as possible. So that I am first of all not bored. I do not want to get bored with the same stuff. See, when it comes to explaining the basic concept, fine. But then, when it comes to the examples and case studies or whatever things that are happening in the discipline, unless otherwise I add a new kind of a flesh to it, there cannot be a you know, new picture emerging. Interestingly, we see that in the kind of uh, students that are passing the exams, we see that the ones from the very recent batches score better when compared to the previous ones. It is understandable. When I am also studying along with you, I am able to try, I am trying to give to you more newer stuff. That's the reason why I always tell my junior teachers that you study first. Do not try to have one notebook in your hand and try to rattle the same thing batch after batch, year after year, century after century. It should not be that way. It is not like an ancient history book or a Veda that is written some time back and the same Vedic scripture you are reading every, every day in and day out. It's not that way. There has to be some kind. So what we would be doing is in the advanced stuff that we are going to provide to you uh, and when we are Picking up such kind of chit chats, they would be from the recent discussions in the in the in the you know, academic uh, circle of anthropology. Now, the other day somebody was asking, uh, "Is anthropology the study of tribes only?" Kind of a thing. Maybe I would want to uh, throw some light on that and then take you forth. What is anthropology, you will be able to understand only after three and a half months. So during this particular phase, if somebody asks you anthropology, what is anthropology, at different points of time in the course, you would be giving different answers to them. The same way, if the question, if a question I am giving you today to write an answer for, it would not be the same what you are going to write three and a half months later. It doesn't mean that you won't write these three and a half months, you will start there. You should be writing whenever it is necessary and possible, but then the answer would become much more matured with more amount of reading. 
once you are finishing the entire syllabus, you would be able to have that, you know, eagle's eye and view. You will be able to have a much more comprehensive answer when compared to what you were writing in the beginning. That's the objective, actually. In order to tell what anthropology is, uh, I, should, I should actually give you the beginnings of this. This is that discipline which was the result of a surprise and shock. Uh, when especially the British were trying to rule the various continents across the globe, when they were coming in contact with the several bizarre cultures, they were so very shocked by those cultural practices and they started studying. So initially this discipline was actually called culturology. It was called culturology, it was not anthropology. The name comes much later. Culturology was the first name, <coughs> study of cultures. For now I believe, for now I presume that we know the meaning of culture. I know pretty well that we don't know. But then for the moment we presume that we know it. So it was the study of culture. And because they were looking at those people who seemed to be different from them, not simply different, they thought, they found, they believed that those new cultures to whom they are getting exposed were maybe inferior to them. So the beginnings of the discipline was based on the belief that we are superior, they are inferior. So beginnings had very shallow foundations. Beginnings were based on some kind of wrong judgments. See, if somebody is introducing a new subject to you and starting on a negative connotation that might not be sending some kind of a positive thing. But then I will have to say this, the foundations of the discipline were based on one, surprise and shock. Second one is the belief that I am superior to the one that I am studying or observing for the first time. Let me use another name for this. <clears throat> Sir, I have a very horrible handwriting. Please bear with me the next four months. You'll get used to it eventually. I need a person like Hammurabi to decipher my own handwriting. Uh, <clears throat> I'm using this word now. Let me also say this to you. Uh, see, from whichever chapter that I am starting your syllabus, whichever chapter that I am dealing with, we would, in the process of discussion, come across certain terms that may be new to us. So every class, we would dedicate some amount of time, either in the beginning or in the middle or towards the end of your class, where we are going to introduce certain new terms to you. So a parallel dictionary is being uh, you know, developed by you. So that, you know, when I'm using this term, so if I think that in the next one week of time, I'm going to use these three or four terms extensively, I would give the basic meaning of them so that I would not have to struggle when I'm using the term in the class. So I will say, so this, this is one of the first terms of that kind that I'm introducing in your class, ethnocentrism. I said that anthropology was the result of of the shock and surprise of the British and other European fellows and it was also because of the belief and because of the attitude of being ethnocentric. Ethnocentric is that person, is that phenomena in which an individual or a group believes that they are superior to the other people. Others are inferior and we are superior. So in the beginnings when people were writing it was that way. I will give you a basic glimpse. So right now I am trying to explain to you that whether it is a study of tribes alone or something else. And I would uh, from time to time be, be providing to you how different anthropologists were studying what is called culture across the centuries. So you understand from today's class you can take one statement that anthropology is the study of cultures. 
that's the first definition that I can give you. There are more than a thousand definitions. And any definition, it would be based on how, in what circumstance somebody is defining. So if I ask you to define a family, if I ask you to define something like a marriage, how you define it is based on who is defining and in what circumstances he is defining and in what culture he is describing. That's the reason why one other thing that we are going to see in the discipline is for many of these terms, you have umpteen number of definitions. And one other question people would come up with later is, should we have to remember all those definitions? I'm afraid not. Take up those definitions which you can remember easily, number one. So I would always be in a hunt for the cutest definitions so that the student can easily remember. And second one is whenever I am picking up definitions for the student, I see to it that diverse things are covered in each of those definitions. Each of, defini each of those definitions is not the same as the other ones. So that when you are giving in the exam, different perspectives are actually incorporated. So you may be giving five or six definitions for example. To the examiner it looks to be a huge amount. But then you know very well that you know only those five definitions and nothing more than that. That is how trying to, you know, give, get the maximum by giving the least. Most of the time we try to do that. In the process of reciprocity, in the process of give and take, we would want to give the least and take the maximum from the other fellow. Look at chapter 3, paper 1. Read out. Hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Stop, stop, stop. So when I'm using this word reciprocity, I'm using it from your own discipline. You are going to study in the later classes how a reciprocity occurs, why there should be reciprocity. And meaning of reciprocity itself, as we understand from the basic English, would go challenged. Many times what happens is certain terms, they might be having some generic meaning in you know, general uh, conversations that we have. So in a general English, general conversations, we would be having one particular kind of a meaning. But when it comes to this particular discipline, we see that the meaning of it may get altered from time to time, from individual to individual. No. Ethnocentrism was that. I was saying that uh, in the beginning when they were trying to look at the simple societies, I'm using the word simple societies. Uh, you will have to focus on the terms that we are using. See, when you are answering, uh, especially the paper of anthropology, there shall not be sir, the use of certain terms which might look to be derogatory. Once you are studying, once you are writing about this discipline, you are you will have to, you will have to have a, have a restraint uh, against using terms such as primitive. Primit if, if somebody is calling you, you are a primitive fellow, it's an abuse. And nobody would want to be called that way. Just imagine somebody is calling you a primitive fellow. Your entire ego would take a beating there. And you would try hard to come out of it, which you will not be able to. But then let me tell you this, the very first textbook, a formal textbook written in anthropology was called, was named, Primitive Culture. Look at your syllabus, chapter 6, paper 1. Classical evolution, what is written there? Tyler. Yes. Classical evolution, there are three names given in chapter 6, paper 1, that is Tyler. Tyler was the author of this book, Primitive Culture. Today, no anthropologist would accept the use of the word primitive for somebody who seemed to be less evolved than the others. You call them simple societies, you don't call them primitive societies or primitive cultures. 
just because something had triggered, something had helped you, ticked that way, you must have had a huge cultural, technological development. And you must have, you must have become something superior when compared to the others. It does not mean that you are superior, they are inferior. It does not mean that you are advanced and they are primitive. They may be primitive because they do not want to get advanced, though there is a chance to go. We are going to see those dynamics, whether we should thrust our ideas on them, tribal development, what should we do in tribal development, etc. So today I am saying that anthropology is the study of culture. And anthropology is actually a study through which you can understand the other cultures. It is not simply a study of culture. It is the study of other cultures. So to begin with, maybe it was that discipline which was trying to understand the others. So the second definition that I am trying to give to you today is, it is that discipline that helps us understand the others. I have removed the word cultures there. When we say that it, are, are, are you with me in the class sir? Are you with me in the class? If you are getting bored, you just raise the hand. I have several other entertainments to do. Because I do not want the student to get bored in the class. And you should not go with a disappointment. Ticket gone kunna pudu, justice jaragale. 300 rupees petti, balcony ticket gone kunna hu, cinema ke lao. So, the 300 rupees should be worth it. And sir, whenever you feel like sleeping in the class, remember the amount that you have paid there. Divide the amount by 90, each class, how much you have paid. I owe that to you. So you see to it that, that money actually has its worth. It's not simply the money, but the time that you are going to spend here. And the amount of listening that you are doing back home, because you are spending years in the exam, that's very torturous. At home you can bear, remember her, what she was saying the other day to you. She is earning more than what you are earning. And she knows that you are here in this field for quite a long time. And maybe she is trying to look at the others also now. I have said so much. I will have to say this in the class. I do not teach anthropology. I do not believe in teaching anthropology. Uh, I teach several other things in the class. People name it as anthropology. And uh, towards the end of the course, it is not simply what Taylor said, what Geed said, what some other fellow said. What I said is more important. It is only that in the examination you may not be quoting me there. Kind of. Let me tell you something here. <coughs> so I am trying to actually introduce, I am trying to actually introduce several dimensions of anthropology. Uh, it looks like, you know, a blindfolded fellow trying to describe an elephant. Whenever he is uh, holding a tail, that looks to be something else. He is holding something else. It looks to be something else. Now, there is the other way. I have defined, I have given a second definition there. Anthropology helps in understanding the others. When I say others, they may be other cultures, they may be other individuals, other groups, maybe the others within your own family, other families or other caste groups, other races, other nationalities. So anything that comes as others that needs a proper, um, proper way of looking at them. See, at the end of the course, at the end of the course, of course, you know, our target may be a 350, 340, whatever. Do not every time look at that number. Numbers are dubious. Numbers eat away your night's, night's sleep. Do not look at the number. Just enjoy the process of learning. In the process of learning, unless otherwise you enjoy the process, forget about 340, I am afraid, even if 30 comes. Do not run behind that number. They will eventually come. First you be clear of the concept. And you enjoy writing, expressing. Many times what I find with the student is if I give a script to write, they write as if they are no, doing some benefit to me. 
It is not for me that you are writing. You should enjoy writing. And we have people. I will be, you know, in the, in the process of the course, I will be showing certain scripts to you, exhibiting certain scripts with the permission of the students writing them. We have students who write the same thing a number of times till they are satisfied. I remember one student, I cannot forget that statement that he had given. Whenever I am writing something, I am not thinking about whether UPSC is liking this answer or not. I remember my teacher, whether my teacher would like this or not. There was no overstatement than that. But then I could see that the, I was actually looking at some of the answers that the person was writing. The way the answer was changing from number one time to number four time. Because ultimately, he wanted the best to come out. And in order for the best to come out, you will have to give time. Sir, I say this many times in the class, any relationship needs time. Any relationship needs time. She must have said this many times to you. She needs your time. Now UPSC is your first relationship. So when you are into a relationship with anthropology or any, for the, any subject for that matter, give it a time. In the future, you are going to hear this sentence many times, you are not giving me time or you don't understand me, you don't understand my perspective. Anthropology has an answer to that. When students come and ask me, why should we take anthropology, I have a very wild and a stupid smile on my face. I don't know what to tell them. I only say that you choose the subject, you come sit in the class, I will teach you. But I, I cannot tell why you take anthropology. Why, what can I tell there? Can I say in the counseling room that see you can understand the other people better? How does it matter? For them marks matter. Now I cannot sit there and talk about all this philosophy. <coughs> so it's like you know, the fun of having a pudding is lies in having it. I cannot describe how the pudding is. That is the second definition. So throughout the discipline, how people have been trying to understand the others. After the four months of course, even if at one instance you are trying to put yourself in the other's shoes to understand their perspective, my job is done. So throughout your life, your effort will be to minimize the number of occasions when the other person says that you do not understand him. That's the object. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that's why anthropology is not simply the study of tribes. It is the study of simple fellows. It is the, the effort to understand others, other cultures, other people. But if you look at the syllabus of that uh, subject, the, as is given in, in, in UPSC, look at uh, chapter 1.3, paper 1. All of you must carry your syllabus to the class. Hmm? It should be like your mantra. It should be there with you every time. 1.3, read out. Mean branches of anthropology, the scope and relevance, social, cultural, and anthropology. Four branches are there. Four branches are mentioned in your syllabus, socio-cultural anthropology, social, oblique cultural is given. Hmm. Social, oblique cultural anthropology. Uh, the oblique is very important there. He is not mentioning it as socio-cultural anthropology. He says social, oblique cultural. So he might give in the exam social anthropology or cultural anthropology or he might give socio-cultural anthropology or social anthropology versus cultural anthropology. Aak is pa, pak is aak. Aak pak kare pak. Those who do not know Telugu, I can't explain to them. The neighbors must explain. Kare pak. Don't sleep in the class. Do whatever. Naka sal na chadu. I told in the previous class that I am going to supply the music of anthropology also. So maybe from the next week onwards, I am going to release the songs of anthropology. <laughs> uh, so that, you know, whatever chapter that you are dealing with, related song will be there. 
uh, when you are listening to that song, you know the content of it. Sometimes definitions are also given in the song. So forget about A.R. Rahman, etc., etc. for the next four months, you enjoy the music of anthropology. You live in that, kind of. I do not want professors to come from here. I want passionate learners because Unfortunately, in India, we do not have much work going on in anthropology, but the rest of the world is extensively using. Look at your syllabus, chapter 5, paper 2. Media and social change. There is a topic there, media and social change. Yes, huh? media and social change. Pick up any book of anthropology, there is no convincing answer for that. You will have some gray areas like that. Did you find out, sir? Did you look it in the syllabus document? Tomorrow before coming, you pick up your syllabus paper. If at all you do not have, you ask the office people, they will give you. First, you should touch the syllabus physically, that is very important. Physical touch has its own impact. There is something called touch psychology. Premaga mutkunte, that will come to you. Whatever and whoever it is. Neighbor's car, neighbor's wife, whatever. I didn't say anything, blasphemous things, Ramzan, and then not supposed to talk, whatever. But then the basic tendencies, you know, can't keep out of them. And I think after all, after the end of the course, who is bothered about the subject? No? People remember only the instances that made you laugh in the class and nothing more than that. No? But do not simply focus on them, focus on the course. What is that you have read? Social change, media and social change. Suppose you look at NCRT book, there is one book titled uh, Social Change in India, NCRT Social Change in do not buy. Uh, NCRT social change in India, there is one chapter there, media and social change. After reading you will understand that there is nothing there. Why you have read, why they have written, God knows, with due respects to the organization, because without NCRT no UPSC. <coughs> A hunt for such kind of uh, topics had taken me to enroll for a course called Social Media and Anthropology. Right now I am doing that course, a small course. Thankfully from time to time, uh, we are able to find such courses. For a small question, we can do one course, five months course, six months course. At the end of the course, I might be able to give a 300 word answer to the student. I must have spent about a 300 dollars there. For every dollar, you know, one word. So, 300 dollars, 300 words. That makes sense actually. I will tell you something interesting that is happening. There is one uh, <coughs> project that is going on called Why We Post. There is a project that is going on called Why We Post. This is actually a project that was started by nine different anthropologists in young anthropologists in nine different countries studying nine different things. The common theme is social media. So the course is social media and anthropology. Until I have gone through this, I was not in a confident mode to give an answer to the student that see write this you will get the marks. Many times what happens is mediocre answers are circulated to the students. Examiner knows the value of the answer. You think that you have scribbled, you have written a hundred words. He might be feeling that it is not worth of one mark also. That is the reason why on many occasions you are even given zeros. If the examiner is very badly hit, he might give minus five. <coughs> do not rub in a wrong way, very difficult. At least 0 is respectable, not a minus 5. 
So, your effort should be to stay on the positive side in the first place. We are going to see several videos in our classes. As I uh, believe that uh, the three R course uh, should be filled with entertainment. I cannot lecture for three hours. You will be, half the people will be snoring. If at all you have a problem of snoring, I found some instrument in the recent past. I will help you out. I will send you a link, you can buy that. So that the others are not disturbed in the class and in the night she will also be not disturbed. I would want to stop there so that I continue this in the class of marriage and divorce because many divorces are happening because of snoring. <laughs> this is not out of syllabus, in syllabus only. Instability of marriage is one of the topics, increasing problems in marriage. Marriage itself is a problem. Once you are into problem, there would be definitely other problems coming up. Are you happy in the class? Are you fine in the class? Keep smiling, that's very important. Uh, with, a, with a somber face and a wooden face, I do not want a student to sit in the class cursing me. Keep smiling, that's very, very important. We have n number of problems in our life, several problems. But let the problems be left outside the door there. Only then you would be able to have a proper association in the class and the result can be ensured. Give your 100%. Giving 100% is very, very important. One of the topics that we are going to deal in the upcoming of three or four classes will be karma. Karma you understand, right? Huh? Karma, meaning of it we will be explaining you know, with a lot of uh, uh, inferences, with a lot of uh, statements from different Vedas and of course Gita. Gita and Te. Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> One of the uh, Hindu texts that I really love is Bhagavad Gita, especially the ones that were given by Lord Krishna. So when I am saying that in the class, you will have to give 100%. It is not me who is saying, Lord Krishna says that wherever you are, give your 100%. That is very, very important. Check out on, your, on a daily basis whether in any particular uh, work that you are doing, act that you are performing on that particular day, whether you have given 100%. Even if you are able to find one particular act, whatever it is, brushing your teeth, taking bath, sleeping or talking to people, attending a class, writing something, reading a newspaper, anything for that matter, at any point of time, did you give a total 100% without any kind of a deviation? If you are not giving that 100%, I do not think we have a right to say that we want a result. You don't know how much value today's class is for me. Because for the last few days, I was not in the class. I had finished a course and then I will have to share a lot of uh, uh, experiences from my field work. Because most of the examples I am going to give for your batch is out of my own field work. After field work, when I have returned, I have returned on 10th the last month. I know that this is quite a long time, almost a month without addressing a crowd in the class. That is actually very dangerous time for me. I go crazy. People at home are feeling bad that I am going crazy. They do not know what to do to me. My little fellow, I have a four and a half years old son. Yesterday night when I was trying to give solace to his feet, while him, he was getting up and asking, why are you so sad? Are you thinking about the class? Can you imagine a four and a half year fellow asking me in the middle of the night, why are you sad? Are you thinking about your class? And then do you understand that the four and a half years fellow prays in the middle of the night that, you know, my class should go well? I do not know who is there inside him. Is it an adult fellow or some Holy Spirit out there? don't know. This class is very, very important for me because it is something like a body personae for me. People do 
take up professions for different reasons. The reason for me dealing with this particular subject, with this particular classroom, is a belief that I belong here. The crowd here might change. But then, you come back to me after four years, I'll recognize you. You must have grown out of proportion from all sides, but still I would make you out. So that's what happens, you know. Body has no control. It can go in any way, in any direction. It's like more amoebic rather, amorphous if I'm allowed to say. And UPSC is that kind of a thing. Your bodies go out of proportion, I'm sorry to say. But then, no, you'll have to focus on that also. Come back here. The third thing I have said about what is anthropology. <coughs> Sir, uh, in your class, I am going to begin with uh, um, the one called Indian anthropology. We have in chapter 1.3, paper 1, seen that there are four branches there, four branches in anthropology. Whenever I am I am starting one particular topic, whenever I am starting one particular topic, for example, uh, say chapter 7, paper 1, chapter 7, paper 1, there is something called study of language, linguistic anthropology, study of language, etc. So what we would be doing is, all the related things we would be doing at one place. When I am doing chapter 7, language, I would be doing things, there would be, can I have the book? Uh, they might be writing from one side of the notebook and then uh, the dictation formal may be written from the other side. This is one way. And I do not know how many of us have the habit of drawing margins to the notebook. I mean, uh, if an intermediate fellow, uh, undergraduate fellow who is planning to study for UPSC, first thing we tell is, first you learn to draw the margins in the notebook. Then you can start studying. That's a different story. Now, because you are already grown up people, you may feel too slightly lazy on that front. You can give this job to your junior fellow in the neighborhood, saying that Aap ye karo, IAS ban jaoge. he would do it for you. Do, yeah, or maybe somebody at home, you know, you can give an ice cream and get it done. Two margins are very much necessary. The second way in which students do is whatever you know, description, explanation that we are giving, they might be doing in the margin on the right hand side. Generally, right hand margins are bigger than the left hand side. Uh, do not be stingy about the pages. Uh, kind of a thing. You will have to have certain margins so that, see, when I am doing one particular topic in today's class, I will not be ending that in today's class. Maybe it would take three and a half months for me to finish the topic. So that, you know, you would have some kind of a possibility of scribbling around. Uh, this is one as I am di yes, discussing things with you. Second thing will be dictation. I am known for dictating uh, uh, pretty mm, reasonably good speed. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, you don't have time to scratch yourself also. So, speed I am I'm very much particular about. Initially, I might seem to be going slightly slowly, uh, but I would want you to go with that speed, so that in the examination there would not be a problem. There, no, speed test is also there, and hence, there's the second one. Whatever you are going to write here, in your very beautiful handwriting. Keep it to your own self. Be extremely selfish. That's very important, especially when it comes to UPSC preparation. Not even to your closest of the friends. You should be. Later, you would be repenting that you have written the notes with three hours every day, the torture in the class for 90 days. And then uh, uh, somebody else who had taken your notes has passed the exam, and you are writing for the next generation. We shall not be having, you know, that five-year plan kind of a thing, you know, especially if you are coming with an optional subject under me. I do not want to see the faces again and again in the class. Just imagine for three months you are seeing me for 90 days, three hours every day. Nobody would want to see a Shah Rukh Khan also 90 days continuously. So, once if you are doing, do it thoroughly. Give it the maximum. And sir, the third thing, apart from this, this is the primary thing. 
See, we divide uh, the study content into two parts. One we call the basic content and the advanced content. This is the very basic thing. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, as when it comes to this particular subject, not everything is there in one book. That's where maybe the teacher becomes necessary. Otherwise, the teacher is redundant there. If everything would have been there in three or four books, everybody would have done from the three or four books. Uh, but I think that's where the teacher comes into picture. The basic material is this one. The second material will be in the printed form that we are going to give to you. And the tertiary material, the third material, which we call slightly an advanced kind of a stuff to read, would be provided to you in the soft copies. These are the three basic things. And fourth will be t from time to time whenever I feel like scribbling something out of my frustration in the form of some blog or something, I would ask you to go and study and break your heads there. That could be another one. These are the four things. Even in the textbooks, because <clears throat> the moment we start the course, the other questions that might come to, your, to, come, come to me would be the list of books that we will have to study or purchase or do both. I have in this particular booklet given some basic and some advanced books. I do not want you to purchase any advanced books right now, unless otherwise you would want to maintain a library back home. And these are also, you know, quite a large numbers actually. Uh, generally, this particular list, in addition to that, I would give you several other titles. You should be knowing all those titles in order to write better answers in the exam. Because many times in this subject what happens is, whenever you are explaining something, there comes a necessity of mentioning who must have mentioned it in which book. So for that particular purpose, you should be knowing the books, the titles and the writers, even if you haven't read those books. I can confidently say that there are people who scored some of the highest marks without reading a single book of, from there. But then, I would recommend this so that you have, there are two reasons why I recommend One is, the book sales must happen. <laughs> Second is, uh, you should have that feel of the original reading. After you have read the original book, you should come back and say that, okay, class material is much more exhaustive. Then I said, okay, fine then. Because tomorrow when you go to the interview, I do not want you to have wide face when the board asks you, what are the books that you have read? Please do not use my name there. I do not want a publicity there so that I would be screwed up later. So just remain to these are the certain basic books I would mention. Even in the material that I am going to circulate to you, apart from the first booklet that I said, I categorize the material also, printed material also, into basic and advanced material. As the name suggests, basic is the one, by default you will have to study. And remember, sir, if something is there in the print, in the form of a note, that will not be there in the classroom. And if I am giving a very detailed note in the class, that will not be there in the printed note. And uh, if these two things, if I think that they will have to be taken to another level, I would be providing in the soft copies, which would be generally, you know, the things that I must have written recently, or they might have been extracted from some kind of a journal from the recent past, etc. That's an advanced reading. And then, uh, coming to the other question, how many days or months or years are required to finish the course? Um, <clears throat> As I always say to the student, do not wait for the teacher to complete the course in order for you to begin preparation. Because many people come up with this question, when will you finish so that I can start? Uh, I think that's a very discouraging kind of a thing. As long as you are here uh, for, for the three and a half, four months of time, the formula is very, very clear, not simply here in any optional subject, any, any subject in general studies or whatever. The, uh, the basic rule is very much same, that you know, if you are sitting here for a three hours of time, back home three hours of reading is mandatory. That's the basic minimum actually. So if, you are, if I'm doing a three-hour class here, I expect you to do that three-hour thing. Sometimes what might happen is if I'm giving you some kind of an assignment to submit, uh, 
the single assignment, single question might take about you know, three or four hours of time, but it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, when you are going to the exam, that piece of paper which you have produced uh, by yourself, if that is there, you in the exam, you need not have to blink for a minute. You are straight away writing that because I must have corrected it. I must have suggested you know, changes uh, that have to be incorporated. The same paper you are going to reproduce there, that saves your time. Now, coming to your writing practice. Uh, <clears throat> Every, every batch, you know, I find this question from at least some of the boys and girls. Uh, do you have tests and writing practice? I can uh, say it with a thumping uh, thing that, you know, the more a student is asking in the beginning about the test, the less he would be writing later. Uh, I, I have to say this, the three kinds of things. One we say uh, self-tests. Uh, self-tests are the ones, of course, I give you for your self-evaluation. I would be giving you the basic key there and what, what should be the approach of the answer, etc. What are the facts to be incorporated? That's a self-test. Then you, we have assignments. Assignments would be consisting of a list of questions. It's more or less like a question paper, a full question paper. But then when I say assignment, you are going to refer to several material that, uh, no, or maybe something that I have asked you to read from a textbook, etc. And you are going to prepare an answer there, prepare several answers and submit to us. This is the assignment. So in the whole lot of the course of three and a half months, maybe you would be having four or five big assignments. And then the third writing thing is the full-fledged test. Those are 250 mark tests. Uh, see, my objective uh, is uh, to complete the course by the end of September. Um, and suppose somebody is uh, writing the main exam this time, they should be approaching me. Uh, so that you know, I can make some kind of an arrangement for them that you know they are safely delivered uh, well before the date of their you know, exam. Uh, but generally, you know, my idea is that I would be finishing the course by the end of uh, September. September 29th is the main exam commencing this year. So if somebody is writing for them, we would be giving an extra push through various mechanisms. But uh, otherwise, if you are writing, you know, planning for the next year. Uh, during this course of three and a half, four months of time, if I feel that, you know, one particular section I have almost finished and I can give a full test on that, you would be put across to that particular test. Otherwise, most of the tests would happen once you are finishing that course. So September end, if I am finishing, you would be given about two months of time. So, uh, because I strongly understand and believe that there would definitely be some loose ends here and there that would take some time to you know, deal with. So two months of time we give. So October, November, by the end of November, we would be formally closing uh, your complete uh, session along with the tests, etc. This is what is the capsule. Take a timely capsule you know, in a proper way, it will be done. And then uh, another question people would ask is, uh, we are going to write the main exam next year, 2019, then what? I have this very <coughs> popular statement through which I describe myself that once in contact, always in contact. Uh, once you are a student, you are always a student. Uh, so what we do is, uh, even if you have passed out of this particular course, you would be constantly be uh, exposed to different kinds of developments, newer things that are happening, so that your content can be enhanced. So before your uh, main examination, generally before every main examination for that matter, we release uh, certain sets of questions for a last minute you know, brush through. Many people actually, many students bank on that list of questions. You know, they would be waiting for that list of questions which might be consisting of, say, you know, about a 75 uh, or 80 questions, small and big, every, big everything put together. Mm, there are certain much more enterprising students. They would say, they would bring that list to me of those 80 questions that I give. It's me so marker those so that, you know, I can't do anything about them. Nobody can save them. Eight, but then we see that from that 80 or you know, 70 list, along with your test series, you should be able to get about 90% of the questions in your exam. 
uh, if not uh, if not in total to to a major extent so if you are writing the exam in 2019 you can go for another test series later but then the whatever content additions are there from time to time we would be doing some small capsules like four lecture capsule 10 lecture capsule would be provided so that you know if at all any contemporary things are there i would keep on updating this is how the course goes on is that fine uh, then the next thing so that's what i was thinking of actually in today's class <clears throat> and i also have to give you the sequence in which i am going to do your course sequence you will have to keep with you so that you know you would uh, uh, you would also be knowing you know what is going to come later it's not like a surprise and shock tomorrow you are entering the class and then a bombshell is coming on you it's not like that you already know right now I don't suggest you to purchase any books. Take time, a couple of days more. That thing must sink into your mind that you have taken the optional subject. Um, uh, and then maybe after two or three days, if you are having some kind of another thing in mind, this book should not go waste which you have already purchased. It would go anyway into a second sale only. So take time. Don't, don't be you know, in a rush to do benefit to the publishers. I start with the first one rather and also I will tell you uh, so I'll try to explain certain one or two other questions which people ask mm. one question that I was facing the other day was that uh, mm. whether sociology and anthropology are one and the same it's a popular question many people are asking these days why should I take anthropology? Why should I take anthropology? I do not know. But then, what is the difference between them? Um, and uh, there was one very hilarious way of uh, explaining. Somebody was putting it this way. That sociology was the mother of anthropology. And hence, part of sociology, if you are studying, the daughter is covered. So, it, it, can it be like, you know, first three or four lectures of a particular topic in sociology, they can be called anthropology. I am afraid not. If you compare the syllabus for that matter, if you compare the syllabus, there might be several commonalities there. But then, uh, the basic difference exists in the way you approach the things from whose perspective you are going to write and uh, what stand you will have to take irrespective of what the government's stand is what stand an anthropologist has to take that is different from maybe what a sociologist would be doing here the answers would not come through logic or rationality you will eventually understand from the classes of anthropology. Sir, Nindari. If you are feeling sleepy, slap yourself. Or ask your neighbor to slap you. We are going to have several of these episodes in the class. Because I understand class of three hours is torturous. Very, very torturous. I understand very thoroughly. It's not a film of three hours where, no? you are thoroughly entertained but then I am sure and I always aim at that that by the end of the three hours you should go fresh out of the class after three hours of thorough entertainment if you go out you should be able to attend any other class of three hours no? uh, so kind of <laughs> Try to be as attentive as possible in the class. I don't say that 100% attention, but then. Especially do not sleep when you are writing. <laughs> when you are taking down uh, the dictation, do not doze off. But then I have seen students who write the best way when they are sleeping. Uh, my own husband, who was my student long time back, uh, he was a person who would sleep the most in the class. But then later I understood that if you have a sufficient sleep, either outside or in the class, you definitely make it through the exam. 
and hence maybe he made it. So there's no problem. I don't stop anybody from sleeping. But then while you're writing, you be slightly cautious. I was really aghast when I was looking at those notebooks. How can somebody who was sleeping could write this way? Maybe that's an art that he must have got through the years. <coughs> Coming here. So I was giving the difference between sociology and anthropology. You have the syllabus document with you? Yes. Look at chapter one, paper one, chapter one. In the second segment there in chapter one, paper one, there is a mention of relationship with other disciplines. If you have got the syllabus, fine. If you haven't got the syllabus, very fine. The people who have the syllabus would look at the syllabus, you look at them. Can I, can I talk? Oh. There is this question, relationship between anthropology and other social sciences or those sciences, these sciences, etc. One of them is sociology there. Why I am pointing out this is, from whichever topic that I start in the syllabus, in the talk that we are going to have, we would be incorporating several other things which might be existing in different parts of your syllabus. So you would be gathering information about some other part of the syllabus while you are doing a topic X. And even before I thoroughly do that particular topic, I am sure you will be able to write a reasonable answer on that with this kind of a chit chat that happens. I call it a chit chat only. What we are going to have in the triage is a chit chat only, plainly. Many times you wonder whether we have done any anthropology in the class today. But uh, the answer lies when you see the exam. I will give you one example. Look at chapter 6, paper 1. <coughs> as you go down, as you run through that syllabus chapter, uh, you have somewhere there uh, called uh, symbolic anthropology, symbolism in anthropology, symbolic school. Huh? Symbolic. Any names that are mentioned there? Anji, Anji. What's the last name you read? Geertz, a very popular fellow. I'm not teaching any anthropology today, okay? Uh, in the first uh, three or four lectures, with the random saying out of names, etc., you would really wonder that in the first week itself, you learned so much of anthropology. Remember, this is the first name that I am introducing in the class, Clifford Geertz. He is considered to be a symbolic anthropologist, a British fellow. And uh, somebody who had studied a society called uh, Alert in Indonesia. Some of you who must have come from the geography subject, you must have heard of this Alar Island there. Alar. I'm not really worried about his theory, grand theories, etc. My only intention of bringing him into the class now is to say that even chit chats can help you in writing answers. So if you go back to the, uh, the question paper booklet once you, it is supplied to you, 2016 if I could recall, there was this question about Clifford Geertz. The question was uh, to explain how he had uh, studied and he had presented the cockfights. You understand cockfights? Cockfights, huh? Come Sankranti, you have so many cockfights, people from that region, you might be betting, betting Mangaraja, so many uh, mm, things you might be participating in and the people spend lakhs of rupees on, on uh, each of those cocks and then uh, they are auctioned also after the fight is over they are auctioned, the auction might go into lakhs of rupees the sumptuous, if at all you are somebody who participate in them, I don't hesitate accepting uh, the meat once you have it. Do not forget me after Sankranti. That is the benefit of being a teacher. 
when it comes to this, see in one of our classes we were actually explaining how Geeds was looking at the cockpit. I was actually comparing Indian cockpits with uh, Indonesian cockpits and the whole lot of description on which we did not take a formal note actually. We were explaining how he was looking at it. And for that class, whoever was there in the class, they could easily answer that question. At the time when I was describing, I am sure people must not have thought the significance of that. Let me tell you once again, this one, one, one very interesting thing. Um, uh, somehow, mm, as anthropology was an accident for me. Like how many relations in our life are accidents. Uh, my father was a forest service person, he was in a tribal thing, so I got into tribal thing and then somehow, I was a tribal girl actually, and then uh, and I continued with this business of anthropology. And uh, in the process what happens is, um, somewhere uh, the tribal tendencies are, you know, I, I cannot get out of the tribal tendencies. When I'm describing certain things, things might look to be very absurd for the people. Most of us might be the urban lot, who must not have stepped out of the urban centers. And many people do not even know how a village might look like. They're so very unfortunate. Forget about the tribal. There. Unless otherwise you have that kind of an exposure, a relishing it becomes difficult. That's the reason why, why what I do is, from every batch to batch, I see to it that I try to give as many newer examples and newer studies as possible. So that I am first of all not bored. I do not want to get bored with the same stuff. See, when it comes to explaining the basic concept, fine. But then when it comes to the examples and case studies or whatever things that are happening in the discipline, unless otherwise I add a new kind of a flesh to it, there cannot be a you know, new picture emerging. Interestingly, we see that in the kind of uh, students that are passing the exams, we see that the ones from the very recent batches score better when compared to the previous ones. It is understandable. When I am also studying along with you, I am able to try, I am trying to give to you more newer stuff. That's the reason why I always tell my junior teachers that you study first. Do not try to have one notebook in your hand and try to rattle the same thing batch after batch, year after year, century after century. It should not be that way. It is not like an ancient history book or a Veda that is written some time back and the same Vedic scripture you are reading every, every day in and day out. It's not that way. There have to be some kind. So what we would be doing is in the advanced stuff that we are going to provide to you uh, and when we are picking up such kind of chit chats, they would be from the recent discussions in the, in the, in the you know, academic uh, circle of anthropology. Now, the other day somebody was asking, uh, is anthropology the study of tribes only kind of a thing? Maybe I would want to uh, throw some light on that and then take you forth. What is anthropology? You will be able to understand only after three and a half months. So during this particular phase, if somebody asks you anthropology, what is anthropology? At different points of time in the course, you would be giving different answers to them. The same way, if the question, if a question I am giving you today to write an answer for, it would not be the same what you are going to write three and a half months later. It doesn't mean that you won't write these three and a half months, you will start there. You should be writing whenever it is necessary and possible, but then the answer would become much more matured with more amount of reading. Once you are finishing the entire syllabus, you would be able to have that, you know, eagle's eye and view. You will be able to have a much more comprehensive answer when compared to what you were writing in the beginning. That's the objective, actually. In order to tell what anthropology is, uh, I, should, I should actually give you the beginnings of this. 
This is that discipline which was the result of a surprise and shock. Uh, when especially the British were trying to rule the various uh, continents across the globe, when they were coming in contact with the several bizarre cultures, they were so very shocked by those cultural practices and they started studying. So initially this discipline was actually called culturology. It was called culturology, it was not anthropology. The name comes much later. Culturology was the first name, <coughs> study of cultures. For now I believe, for now I presume that we know the meaning of culture. I know pretty well that we don't know. But then for the moment we presume that we know it. So it was the study of culture. And because they were looking at those people who seemed to be different from them, not simply different, they thought, they found, they believed that those new cultures to whom they are getting exposed were maybe inferior to them. So the beginnings of the discipline was based on the belief that we are superior, they are inferior. So beginnings had very shallow foundations. Beginnings were based on some kind of wrong judgments. See, if somebody is introducing a new subject to you and starting on a negative connotation that might not be sending some kind of a positive thing. But then I will have to say this, the foundations of the discipline were based on one, surprise and shock. Second one is the belief that I am superior to the one that I am studying or observing for the first time. Let me use another name for this. <clears throat> Sir, I have a very horrible handwriting. Please bear with me the next four months. You will get used to it eventually. I need a person like Hammurabi to decipher my own handwriting. Uh, <clears throat> I am using this word now. Let me also say this to you. Uh, see, from whichever chapter that I am starting your syllabus, whichever chapter that I am dealing with, we would, in the process of discussion, come across certain terms that may be new to us. So every class, we would dedicate some amount of time, either in the beginning or in the middle or towards the end of your class, where we are going to introduce certain new terms to you. So a parallel dictionary is being uh, you know, developed by you. So that, you know, when I'm using this term, so if I think that in the next one week of time, I'm going to use these three or four terms extensively, I would give the basic meaning of them so that I would not have to struggle when I'm using the term in the class. So I will say, so this, this is one of the first terms of that kind that I'm introducing in your class, ethnocentrism. I said that anthropology was the result of of the shock and surprise of the British and other European fellows and it was also because of the belief and because of the attitude of being ethnocentric. Ethnocentric is that person, is that phenomena in which an individual or a group believes that they are superior to the other people. Others are inferior and we are superior. So in the beginnings when people were writing it was that way. I will give you a basic glimpse. So right now I am trying to explain to you that whether it is a study of tribes alone or something else. And I would uh, from time to time be, be providing to you how different anthropologists were studying what is called culture across the centuries. So you understand from today's class you can take one statement that anthropology is the study of cultures. This is the first definition that I can give you. There are more than a thousand definitions. And any definition, it would be based on how, in what circumstance somebody is defining. So if I ask you to define a family, if I ask you to define something like a marriage, how you define it is based on 
who is defining and in what circumstances he is defining and in what culture he is describing. That is the reason why one other thing that we are going to see in the discipline is for many of these terms you have umpteen number of definitions. And one other question people would come up with later is should we have to remember all those definitions? I am afraid not. Take up those definitions which you can remember easily, number one. So I would always be in a hunt for the cutest definitions so that the student can easily remember. And second one is whenever I am picking up definitions for the student, I see to it that diverse things are covered in each of those definitions. Each of, defini each of those definitions is not the same as the other ones. So that when you are giving in the exam, different perspectives are actually incorporated. So you may be giving five or six definitions for example. To the examiner it looks to be a huge amount. But then you know very well that you know only those five definitions and nothing more than that. That is how trying to, you know, give, get the maximum by giving the least. Most of the time we try to do that. In the process of reciprocity, in the process of give and take, we would want to give the least and take the maximum from the other fellow. Look at chapter 3, paper 1. Read out. Hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Stop, stop, stop. So when I am using this word reciprocity, I am using it from your own discipline. You are going to study in the later classes how a reciprocity occurs, why there should be reciprocity and meaning of reciprocity itself as we understand from the basic English would go challenged. Many times what happens is certain terms, they might be having some generic meaning in you know general uh, conversations that we have. So in a general English, general conversations, we would be having one particular kind of a meaning. But when it comes to this particular discipline, we see that the meaning of it may get altered from time to time, from individual to individual. No. Ethnocentrism was that. I was saying that uh, in the beginning when they were trying to look at the simple societies, I am using the word simple societies. Uh, you will have to focus on the terms that we are using. See, when you are answering uh, especially the paper of anthropology, there shall not be sir, the use of certain terms which might look to be derogatory. Once you are studying, once you are writing about this discipline, you are you will have to, you will have to have a, have a restraint uh, against using terms such as primitive. Primitive, if, if somebody is calling you, you are a primitive fellow, it is an abuse. And nobody would want to be called that way. Just imagine somebody is calling you a primitive fellow. Your entire ego would take a beating there. And you would try hard to come out of it, which you will not be able to. But then let me tell you this, the very first textbook, a formal textbook uh, written in anthropology was called, was named Primitive Culture. Look at your syllabus, chapter 6, paper 1. Classical evolution, what is written there? Tyler. Yes. Classical evolution, there are three names given in chapter 6, paper 1, that is Tyler. Tyler was the author of this book, Primitive Culture. Today, no anthropologist would accept the use of the word primitive for somebody who seemed to be less evolved than the others. You call them simple societies, you do not call them primitive societies or primitive cultures. Just because something had triggered, something had helped you, ticked that way, you must have had a huge cultural technological development and you must have, you must have become something superior when compared to the others. It does not mean that you are superior, they are inferior. It does not mean that you are advanced and they are primitive. 
they may be primitive because they do not want to get advanced though there is a chance to grow. We are going to see those dynamics whether we should thrust our ideas on them, tribal development, what should we do in tribal development, etc. So today I am saying that anthropology is the study of culture and anthropology is actually a study through which you can understand the other cultures. It is not simply a study of culture, it is the study of other cultures. So to begin with, maybe it was that discipline which was trying to understand the others. So the second definition that I am trying to give to you today is, it is that discipline that helps us understand the others. I have removed the word cultures there. When we say that it, are, are, are you with me in the class sir? Are you with me in the class? If you are getting bored, you just raise the hand. I have several other entertainments to do. Because I don't want the student to get bored in the class. And you should not go with a disappointment. Ticket gone kunna pudu, justice jaragale. 300 rupees petty, balcony ticket gone kunna hu, cinema ke lao. So, the 300 rupees should be worth it. And sir, whenever you feel like sleeping in the class, remember the amount that you have paid there. <laughs> Divide the amount by 90. Each class, how much you have paid. I owe that to you. So you see to it that, that money actually has its worth. It's not simply the money, but the time that you are going to spend here. And the amount of listening that you are doing back home, because you are spending years in the exam, that's very torturous. At home you can bear, remember her, what she was saying the other day to you. She's earning more than what you're earning. And she knows that you are here in this field for quite a long time. And maybe she is trying to look at the others also now. I have said so much. I will have to say this in the class. I do not teach anthropology. I do not believe in teaching anthropology. Uh, I teach several other things in the class. People name it as anthropology. And uh, towards the end of the course, it is not simply what Taylor said, what Geed said, what some other fellow said. What I said is more important. It is only that in the examination you may not be quoting me there. Kind of. Let me tell you something here. <coughs> so I am trying to actually introduce, I am trying to actually introduce several dimensions of anthropology. Uh, it looks like, you know, a blindfolded fellow trying to describe an elephant. Whenever he is uh, holding a tail, that looks to be something else. He is holding something else. It looks to be something else. Now, there is the other way. I have defined, I have given a second definition there. Anthropology helps in understanding the others. When I say others, they may be other cultures, they may be other individuals, other groups, maybe the others within your own family, other families or other caste groups, other races, other nationalities. So anything that comes as others that needs a proper, a proper way of looking at them. See, at the end of the course, at the end of the course, of course, you know, our target may be a 350, 340, whatever. Do not every time look at the number. Numbers are dubious. Numbers eat away your night's, night's sleep. Do not look at the number. Just enjoy the process of learning. In the process of learning, unless otherwise you enjoy the process, forget about 340, I am afraid, even if 30 comes. Don't run behind that number. They will eventually come. First you be clear of the concept. And you enjoy writing, expressing. Many times what I find with the student is if I give a script to write, they write as if they are you know, doing some benefit to me. It is not for me that you are writing. You should enjoy writing. And we have people. I will be, you know, in the, in the process of the course, I will be showing certain scripts to you, exhibiting certain scripts with the permission of the students writ writing them. We have students who write the same thing a number of times.
satisfying, still they are satisfied. I remember one student, I cannot forget that statement that he had given. Whenever I am writing something, I am not thinking about whether UPSC is liking this answer or not. I remember my teacher, whether my teacher would like this or not. There was no overstatement than that. But then I could see that the, I was actually looking at some of the answers that the person was writing. The way the answer was changing from number one time to number four time. Because ultimately he wanted the best to come out. And in order for the best to come out, you will have to give time. Sir, I say this many times in the class, any relationship needs time. Any relationship needs time. She must have said this many times to you. She needs your time. Now UPSC is your first relationship. So when you are into a relationship with anthropology, you are any, for the, any subject for that matter, give it a time. In the future, you are going to hear this sentence many times. You are not giving me time. Or you don't understand me. You don't understand my perspective. Anthropology has an answer to that. When students come and ask me, why should we take anthropology, I have a very wild and a stupid smile on my face. I don't know what to tell them. I only say that you choose the subject, you come sit in the class, I will teach you. But I, I cannot tell why you take anthropology. Why, what can I tell there? Can I say in the counseling room that, see, you can understand the other people better? How does it matter? For them, marks matter. Now, I cannot sit there and talk about all this philosophy. <coughs> so, it's like, you know, the fun of having a pudding is lies in having it. Now, I cannot describe how the pudding is. That's the second definition. So, throughout the discipline, how people have been trying to understand the others. After the four months of course, even if at one instance, you are trying to put yourself in the other's shoes to understand their perspective, my job is done. So throughout your life, your effort will be to minimize the number of occasions when the other person says that you do not understand him. That's the object. Okay? Now, <clears throat> that's why anthropology is not simply the study of tribes. It is the study of simple fellows. It is the, the effort to understand others, other cultures, other people. But if you look at the syllabus of that uh, subject, the, as is given in, in, in UPSC, look at uh, chapter 1.3, paper 1. All of you must carry your syllabus to the class. Hmm? It should be like your mantra. It should be there with you every time. 1.3, read out. Main branches of anthropology is scope and relevance, social, cultural anthropology, biological anthropology, archaeological anthropology, linguistic anthropology. Four branches are there. Four branches are mentioned in your syllabus, socio-cultural anthropology, social, oblique cultural is given. Hmm. Social, oblique cultural anthropology. Uh, the oblique is very important there. He is not mentioning it as socio-cultural anthropology. He says social, oblique cultural. So he might give in the exam social anthropology or cultural anthropology, or he might give socio-cultural anthropology, or social anthropology versus cultural anthropology. Aak is pak, pak is aak. Aak pak kare pak. Those who do not know Telugu, I can't explain to them. The neighbors must explain. Kare pak. Don't sleep in the class. Do whatever. Naak asal na chadu. <clears throat> I told in the previous class that I am going to supply the music of anthropology also. So maybe from the next week onwards, I am going to release the songs of anthropology. <laughs> uh, so that, you know, whatever chapter that you are dealing with, related song will be there. Uh, when you are listening to that song, you know the content of it. Sometimes definitions are also given in the song. So forget about A.R. Rahman, etc., etc. For the next four months, you enjoy the music of anthropology. You live in that, kind of. I do not want professors to come from here. 
I want passionate learners because unfortunately in India we do not have much work going on in anthropology, but the rest of the world is extensively using. Look at your syllabus chapter 5 paper 2. media and social change. There is a topic there, media and social change. Yes, huh? media and social change. Pick up any book of anthropology, there is no convincing answer for that. You will have some grey areas like that. Did you find out sir? Did you look at in the syllabus document? Tomorrow before coming, you pick up your syllabus paper. If at all you do not have, you ask the office people, they will give you. First you should touch the syllabus physically, that is very important. Physical touch has its own impact. There is something called touch psychology. Premaga mutkunte, that will come to you, whatever and whoever it is, neighbor's car, neighbor's wife, whatever. I did not say anything, blasphemous things, Ramzan, and then not supposed to talk, whatever. But then the basic tendencies, you know can't keep out of them. And I think after all, after the end of the course, who is bothered about the subject? Huh? People remember only the instances that made you laugh in the class and nothing more than that. Huh? But do not simply focus on them, focus on the course. What is that you have read? Social change, media and social change. Suppose you look at NCRT book, there is one book titled uh, Social change in India, NCRT social change in, do not buy. Uh, <laughs> NCRT social change in India, there is one chapter there, media and social change. After reading you will understand that there is nothing there. Why you have read, why they have written, God knows, with due respects to the organization, because without NCRT no UPSC. <coughs> A hunt for such kind of uh, topics had taken me to enroll for a course called Social Media and Anthropology. Right now I am doing that course, a small course. Thankfully from time to time uh, we are able to find such courses. For a small question we can do one course, five months course, six months course. At the end of the course I might be able to give a 300 word answer to the student. I must have spent about a 300 dollars there, for every dollar, you know, one word. So 300 dollars, 300 words. That makes sense actually. I will tell you something interesting that is happening. There is one uh, <coughs> project that is going on called, Why We Post. There is a project that is going on called Why We Post. This is actually a project that was started by nine different anthropologists, nine young anthropologists in nine different countries studying nine different things. The common theme is social media. So the course is social media and anthropology. Until I have gone through this. I was not in a confident mode to give an answer to the student that see write this you will get the marks. Many times what happens is mediocre answers are circulated to the students. Examiner knows the value of the answer. You think that you have scribbled, you have written a hundred words. He might be feeling that it is not worth of one mark also. That is the reason why on many occasions you are even given zeros. If the examiner is very badly hit, he might give minus 5. <coughs> do not rub in a wrong way, very difficult. At least 0 is respectable, not a minus 5. So your effort should be to stay on the positive side in the first place. We are going to see several videos in our classes. As I uh, believe that uh, the 3 hour course. Uh, should be filled with entertainment. I cannot lecture for three hours. You will be, half the people will be snoring. 
If at all you have a problem of snoring, I found some instrument in the recent past. I'll help you out. I'll send you a link, you can buy that. So that the others are not disturbed in the class and in the night she'll also be not disturbed. I would want to stop there so that I continue this in the class of marriage and divorce. Because many divorces are happening because of snoring. <laughs> this is not out of syllabus, in syllabus only. Instability of marriage is one of the topics, increasing problems in marriage. Marriage itself is a problem. Once you are into problem, there would be definitely other problems coming up. Are you happy in the class? Are you fine in the class? Keep smiling, that's very important. Uh, with, a, with a somber face and a wooden face, I do not want a student to sit in the class cursing me. Keep smiling, that's very, very important. We have n number of problems in our life, several problems. But let the problems be left outside the door there. Only then you would be able to have a proper association in the class and the result can be ensured. Give your 100%. Giving 100% is very, very important. One of the topics that we are going to deal in the upcoming of three or four classes will be karma. Karma, you understand, right? No. Karma, meaning of it we will be explaining you know, with a lot of uh, uh, inferences, with a lot of uh, statements from different Vedas and of course Gita. Gita and Te. Uh, Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> One of the uh, Hindu texts that I really love is Bhagavad Gita, especially the ones that were given by Lord Krishna. So when I am saying that in the class, you will have to give 100%. It is not me who is saying, Lord Krishna says that wherever you are, give your 100%. That's very, very important. Check out on, your, on a daily basis whether in any particular uh, work that you are doing, act that you are performing on that particular day, whether you have given 100%. Even if you are able to find one particular act, whatever it is, brushing your teeth, taking baths, sleeping or talking to people, attending a class, writing something, reading a newspaper, anything for that matter, at any point of time, did you give a total 100% without any kind of a deviation? If you are not giving that 100%, I don't think we have a right to say that we want a result. You don't know how much value today's class is for me. Because for the last few days, I was not in the class. I had finished a course and then I'll have to share a lot of uh, uh, experiences from my field work because most of the examples I'm going to give for your batch is out of my own field work. After field work, when I have returned, I have returned on 10th the last month. I know that this is quite a long time, almost a month, without addressing a crowd in the class. That's actually very dangerous time for me. I go crazy. People at home are feeling bad that I'm going crazy. They don't know what to do to me. My little fellow, I have a four and a half years old son. Yesterday night when I was trying to give solace to his feet, oil him, he was getting up and asking, why are you so sad? Are you thinking about the class? Can you imagine a four and a half year fellow asking me in the middle of the night, why are you sad? Are you thinking about your class? And then do you understand that the four and a half years fellow prays in the middle of the night that, you know, my class should go well? I don't know who is there inside him. Is it an adult fellow or some Holy Spirit out there? don't know. This class is very, very important for me because it's something like a body personae for me. People do take up professions for different reasons. The reason for me dealing with this particular subject, with this particular classroom is a belief that I belong here. The crowd here might change, but then you come back to me after four years, I'll recognize you. 
you must have grown out of proportion from all sides, but still I would make you out. So that's what happens, you know. Body has no control. It can go in any way, in any direction. It's like more amoebic rather, amorphous if I'm allowed to say. And UPSC is that kind of a thing. Your bodies go out of proportion, I'm sorry to say. But then you'll have to focus on that also. Come back here. The third thing I have said about what is anthropology. <coughs> Sir, uh, in your class, I am going to begin with uh, um, the one called Indian Anthropology. We have in chapter 1.3, paper 1, seen that there are four branches there, four branches in anthropology. Whenever I am starting one particular topic, whenever I am starting one particular topic, for example, uh, say chapter 7, paper 1, chapter 7, paper 1, there is something called study of language, linguistic anthropology, study of language, etc. So what we would be doing is, all the related things we would be doing at one place. When I am doing chapter 7, language, a related topic comes, I would try to cover like language, linguistic anthropology. Uh, I was saying that we would be using a huge lot of uh, uh, videos, small, small ones, one minute, two minute ones. And then uh, maybe I would be giving certain cartoons to study. I may mail certain cartoons to study so that uh, you can understand, you can identify the problem or you can identify what is the comment that one can draw for one particular theory, etc. Uh, all this is basically to, to involve you in the process. And also I will have to say this, the moment you uh, get your enrollment done, your proper email ID, phone number is up to you, but then proper email ID has to be provided there. Because uh, your emails, uh, email IDs are very important for me to communicate with you. Uh, may, generally what I do is uh, I establish uh, maybe one, a Dropbox so that I start dumping things there, whatever you will have to study. And also, sir, make it a point to take a printout of uh, whatever we are placing there, uh, so that uh, if you are taking a printout on a regular basis, it is easy. Now, after three months of time, you will also be not interested in taking a printout. Uh, so, and then uh, when you are taking a printout, organize them properly, in which chapter it is kind of a thing. And of course, because it's a first class, I did not tell you how you are going to organize your material chapter-wise, etc. That, that comes later. Right now, I'm saying that whenever we are doing a topic, we do them in an interconnected manner. I thought that uh, I would start for your batch from Indian anthropology, um, which looks to be like, a, which looks to be like a, a very, very, uh, oh, what I can say, very familiar to us. Then let me give you the sequence of things to come. Yeah. This you should uh, religiously make a note of. <coughs> we call it Indian society, study of Indian society in paper 2. So chapter 3, 4, 5 falls under Indian society. 2, 6, 7, they fa 2 falls under a common thing. 6 and 7 are tribal anthropology. So those of you who are here for the first time with me or with the subject for that matter, who do not know much about how the syllabus is organized, let me say this which I do not want to say again and again, nevertheless, in paper one, you have chapters 1 to 8, which we call general anthropology and or, or social and cultural anthropology. In paper 1, 9 to 12 is physical anthropology and applied physical anthropology. Paper 2, 
chapters 1 to 5 though there are certain other things there but majorly it is a study of Indian society and the rest of the things in paper 2 we call it tribal anthropology <coughs> That's the basic idea you must be having. So you would start with uh, Indian society mostly, which looks to be very familiar to you. You will eventually understand that you are hardly familiar with it. Let me also say this. Sometimes certain things look very, very simple. The things that look simple may not be simple at all. Simple people are difficult to understand. Many times we wonder how can somebody be so simple. These chapters are like that. Especially chapters 3, 4 and 5, difficult to score, 3 and 5 rather. Difficult to score, look very simple, questions look to be very direct, but convincing the examiner is very challenging. And also remember sir, certain terms that we find in this discipline, if a person from outside the discipline looks at them, he might think that okay I can answer them. He might be answering from his own perspective, from his own discipline, not from this discipline. So for example, look at chapter 5, paper 2. There are a couple of terms there. Towards the end of the chapter, you find something like Sanskritization, Westernization, did you find in chapter 5? Sanskritization, westernization, modernization. Suppose I am using these words, westernization and modernization in a general parlance. Now, if, if, a, if somebody picks up anthropology question paper, if those questions are there, he is not from this discipline, he might think that he can pretty well write that answer. Maybe he can write that answer. But what you should be writing from the discipline's perspective that is not there, you will not score. Randomly, sir, anybody who had done anthropology earlier here? Anybody who had studied anthropology earlier may not be in college. You must have studied under some other teacher or you must have studied by yourself. This word westernization, if at all you um, have not studied anthropology earlier, this is for those people, this question is for those people. How do you define westernization? What do you understand by westernization? What do you understand by this? Generally, generally. Adopting cultures of West, uh, West. Sir, sir, what's your name? What's your name? Huh? Shiva, Chaban Shiva. Huh. Westernization. Uh -huh. Step by step development of whom? For whom? Uh -huh. Step by step development of anybody else? Changing? Sir, sir, but I. Changing working methodology. Sanjeev, ma'am. Modern culture. Modern culture. So, Hanji. Consumerism, materialism. Hanji, sir. Replacing with Western culture. Changing in food habits. Uh, pizza McDonald's is equal to westernization. Or uh, modernization is westernization. Being more open to changes. See how diverse the answers are. Somebody because it is lunch time, Rosa bhi hai, to pizza. <laughs> See if westernization was equal to modernization, you need not have to have two words. If two different words are there, it, it communicates that there is at least some difference between them. Definitely they are not one and the same. 
there might be a misconception that everything Western is modern. And why in anthropology we'll have to study? So let me tell you something here. Whenever we come across any concepts here, you should first know why that concept had come into existence in that discipline. Or if that concept was earlier there somewhere, why that is incorporated in the syllabus here? When we are looking at the background, backgrounds are very important, sir. See, whenever I am dealing a particular topic, I am dealing with a particular topic, I incorporate several things there. It's something like this. You will first finish off that one, then I will go to. So it's not a very detailed uh, this thing, but I have tried to give you an overall idea of how we are going to go about the syllabus. Nationalism is something that I push towards the end actually. Then we are going to talk about in the last class uncomfortable, discomforting things like nationalism, patriotism, whether we are there or not, whether it should be there or not why patriotism, why nationalism, quasi-nationalism, pseudo-nationalism and why in anthropology study them kind of things. If at all you want you can look at uh, uh, chapter 8 and 9, paper 2. That is where you find these names, tribe and nation state, comparison of India and other countries. So it is not simply India we are going to study. It has to be a comparison with the others. Let me give you a very interesting statement there. Right from the beginning, the discipline of anthropology depended on comparison. It's a comparative discipline. So in some of the universities these days, we have this uh, subject being taught called comparative anthropology. Right now it is seen as one of the subdisciplines. Before I introduce you to Indian anthropology, etc., let me say this. To begin with, there were four branches. Four branches listed in 1.3. Uh, now go to chapter 6. Go to chapter 6, paper 1. As you run through the titles there, as you run through the titles there, you find one name called Franz Boas or historical particularism. You found the name there? Boas. Boas. Pronunciations are very important. Spellings and pronunciations, very, very important. Just imagine a British fellow trying to say your name. Suppose you have a name, some, something like Venkatapaya. How does a British fellow might be using that? Nadili. Huh? We are going to talk about churches and how they have meddled with the Indian languages. That's going to be one other topic. Now here, Franz Boas was that person who was the earliest fellow to explain to us what should be the primary branches of anthropology. When I am saying this, suppose a question comes. It was there in the 2017 exam, it was there. Branches of anthropology, what are the chief branches of anthropology? Explain about one of them. If somebody is writing an answer to such a question without naming Franz Boas, it means that you did not study the subject. People might be describing the branches there, describing anthropology there. But you forget Franz Boas. It is forgetting Rama in Ramayana. Without Boas, there is no anthropology. There are no branches of anthropology. But then, I will also be telling you throughout this, this discussion, sir, remember, whatever topic we deal with, there has to be 
a mention of some thinkers who worked in that, in that topic. Without the mention of the thinkers, researchers, field workers, not a single topic should be attempted, including topics like which seem to be apparently very biological in spirit, like chromosomal aberrations. If you are somebody from a life sciences background or a medicine background, the moment we see a question like chromosomal aberrations, no, doesn't give you any marks. You will have to know who are the people, who are the researchers that are actually working in those areas and why in anthropology a study of chromosomal aberrations is becoming necessary. Don't be overloaded with the biological stuff there. Behind the so-called apparently a biological question, there are sociological things involved. So anthropology is actually trying to provide explanation, sociological explanations to biological phenomena. I have given a third definition of anthropology today. We started by saying anthropology is the study of cultures, it is the study of others. Then I said that anthropology is trying to explain the sociological dimension of apparently biological phenomena. That is where there is an intermingling of biological and sociological things. <coughs> I said, anthropology is, anthropology provides a sociological dimension of apparently biological phenomena. What is your name? Hmm? You, sure? you met me before? No? Your brother? <clears throat> Sometimes there is so much of intermingling of genetics. We feel because after all we are all from the same couple. Religion is one topic that actually scintillates me. So I think when we are going to start with Indian anthropology, I would be parallelly introducing the topic of religion to you. Allah ke naam pe na, Ramzan hai to Allah ke naam pe. You would start on his name. So remember sir, whatever topic, small, big, whatever, you will have to have certain things. One is, you should be able to have the basic meaning, basic understanding of the concept, who studied, why they studied, where they studied. These are the basic things. And in that process, you will have to incorporate the researchers and anthropologists, without whom the discussion becomes incomplete. And then, you will have to see whether those topics that we are studying have a contemporary relevance or not. See, many people ask this question. They say that, you know, how will you incorporate current affairs in uh, the discipline? And suppose somebody is looking at anthropology primarily as a tribal discipline. When they say that current affairs, maybe they are talking about something like, you know, tribal development programs or something that is happening in Telangana these days, self-rule by, by the... Uh, by the Adivasis, or the word that now is becoming popular in India is aboriginals, self-rule of the aboriginals. Earlier we were not using the word aboriginals in Indian context. Now this year it had started. So questions like compare aboriginals of India and elsewhere are no surprise. I will have to say this to you. Sir, as we uh, deal with your syllabus, from time to time, uh, I would be naming certain questions. The list you would be writing down somewhere. This list that we are going to name varies from year to year, from batch to batch. That may be based on the contemporary developments in the discipline or, you know, because 
I felt that you should read something. Why I felt that is of no, no, no need for you. Many times out of that feel of the sixth or seventh sense, certain questions can come up in the exam. So you trust the sixth sense of me. Maintain that list, this is very important. And uh, during the course or after your course is over, you go back to those list of questions, how many you are able to solve or kind of a thing. Now coming here. It is not simply something like you know, tribal development programs. When I say that in any topic you will have to incorporate the current developments, what I mean is uh, what is happening in the academics what is happening in the academics of anthropology today? When I say academics of anthropology, uh, are they suggesting any, are they coming up with any new terms, new concepts? And is it that the existing con concepts are challenged or modified, expanded in scope, etc.? So it is not simply some kind of a tribal development program, how much of money is being given, it's not simply that. When we say current affairs in the discipline, we'll have to know what is happening in the academics so that several questions can be, can be uh, you know, attempted or several answers can be modified. That is where once again let me go back to the, to the thing that I was talking about, social media and anthropology. We see there that uh, they are trying to focus on different uh, uh, cultures across the world and how different cultures are using the social media and, the, and we are going to see when that particular topic comes, what is the meaning of media, what is the social media, what constitutes it and how different cultures are responding to the social media. Is it that the cultures are responding or is it that social media is responding to your culture? It is not every time one way. Technology may not be dictating you. You are dictating technology many times. You may be setting limits and boundaries or removing the boundaries from technology. And maybe in the process of which you are trying to sacrifice your own culture. There is one word that I am introducing here today. Is that fine? So these are the things that should be there in all your answers. The concept, the researchers, relevance, and the current changes or whatever. <coughs> I'm using another word here called ethnocide. Sir, so the first of four or five lectures, I'm pretty much sure that you would not have a clue of where we are heading. But then after a week's time, you go back and see, I said this already, you, you, must, you would have learned a lot of anthropology by then. I bet after seven days of uh, the classes, you would have not less than a 20 anthropologists on your fingertips. And I don't believe in making you memorize. That will automatically happen. Internalization of the content is very important. Unknowingly things entering you. It's like a slow poison without knowing it is entering you. So anthropology is a very poisonous discipline. You would slowly get into it and then you would get addicted to it. No? As long as you are addicted to the discipline, it's fine. Don't get addicted to the classes and keep repeating the courses again. Ethnocide. Genocide is a very common word. You know? Genocide is a very common word. Day in and day out we hear this. Genocide. Killing of, mass killing of people of different races or whatever. Different kind rather. Ethnocide is killing of the cultures. Killing of the cultures. Elimination of cultures. Cultures may be eliminated by themselves or it might be, they might be eliminated by others. They might be eliminated by others. <coughs> I wanted to make this statement today. <coughs> uh, 
uh, we are so very fortunate in this part of the world that you know we have a right to say things, we have a right to preserve our past. If not anything else, we at least know our roots. There are our aboriginals, they know the roots, they know their roots. Whether we are trying to protect their roots or not is a different issue. But at least majority of the, I'm using this word very easily now, aboriginals or the simple people, if at all somebody else is using, the primitive people or the tribal people, we know our, our past. But there are other parts of the world where people do not know their culture, they do not know their past. It's a very uncomfortable thing. Going back and trying to know your past and you have no clue where from you have come, how your ancestors lived. You might say, how does it matter today? But then without knowing your origins, it becomes difficult to know your own existence. That's where I'm introducing another definition, another use of anthropology. Anthropology is that discipline that tries to know the origins of cultures. It tries to know the origins of cultures. It tries to see how cultures have changed. It's very important to know your past. History is important, sir. History is important. Why do you study history? Why do you study history? Anji sir, what happened? You were in a dilemma, sociology or anthropology. You were in a dilemma, right? No, no, blue shirt, sir. Uh, no? No, no, I heard, I mean, last time we met, you said sociology, anthropology. I remember. Uh. Whenever people come with a dilemma, I see a silver line there. Is sal to do next year, I didn't say anything. <coughs> What was the question? Why do we study history? To know our past. Why should you know your past? Hmm? Same mistake should not be repeated. Okay, we can be better in the future by knowing our past and, and, and. Ma? Lo louder, ma'am. To live in the present, you should know the past. Huh? It defines your identity and your existence. It defines your identity. To find our identity, maybe to find our place in the present and in the past. So if the past was glorious for us, something must have gone wrong that today you are in shambles. What corrective measures have to be made? How many times you must have studied in history? Medieval is a dark time. Something has gone wrong. This care of India, Nehru says, something has gone wrong that we were thrown into the oblivion. We didn't know what was happening. In every field, we, there was a debacle. Blame it on whatever. People blame it on several things, but then, now coming back here, uh, see every, every uh, topic for that matter has some application in our life. Every topic has an application in our life. Actually, I was supposed to stop in one and a half hour today, but you know my tendency. <coughs> Before three hours, bill doesn't ring. But then I'll try to control myself. Control chal custom. But then. Uh, history. This is the first life lesson that I'm giving to you in the class. Many of your seniors must have said, more than anthropology, we learned life lessons in the class. When somebody says that they are going to explain to you their history, their past, when you are in a relationship, you don't stop them. Their history is very important. But then at that moment, for you history doesn't seem to be important. Don't get washed away in the weak moments. Listen to the history. Because tomorrow if something goes wrong, and if the history comes back alive, that becomes very difficult. I said so. So pay attention to history. In anthropology, we study history for various reasons. 
one of the reasons is to know how cultures must have progressed or must have declined. For every change in culture, there might be reasons. Sometimes the reasons are from within, sometimes they are from outside. You know? Sometimes the reasons are within. See, all of a sudden you seem to be getting a, a gyan, enlightenment. Suddenly you got enlightened. That see, not this subject, but this subject. Suddenly an enlightenment came. The enlightenment must have come from inside or from outside. She got through, I did not, so why not? I also. And both of us were sitting in the same class. She got through because I chose some other optional subject. No, she went through, maybe I also. Some kind of, so that's the reason why. Look at chapter 5, paper 2. Before the words Sanskritization and Westernization, there is something written there. Chapter 5, paper 2, <coughs> indigenous and uh, indigenous and exogenous processes of social change, hyphen, he gives all that. When he says indigenous and exogenous, we are going to examine there what were the internal reasons for a change in Indian society and what were the reasons from outside because of which certain things have changed. sir. Uh, we would be starting with your uh, chapter 3, which is, uh, go, go to the chapter 3 there, chapter 3 in paper 2. That will be the first chapter with which we are going to start, Structure and Nature of Indian Society. That is the heading of that chapter actually, Structure and Nature of Indian Society. They had a lot of things out there. Can you read out? Continue reading there. Varnashram, Purushartha, Karma, Rena, Rebirth, huh? that's a uh, kind of thing. And then you have other things, well, that's a big chapter. Though these books are not given to you still, I believe I should uh, talk about this chapter a bit from the previous year questions. <coughs> I believe how much attention to you give to one particular chapter should be proportionate to the marks that are coming from that chapter. Suppose from one chapter alone you are getting a 70 marks, a 100 marks. You cannot sacrifice that chapter. You cannot look down upon that. How much ever uncomfortable the chapter is. <coughs> because after all we are here for marks. Not for the love of me, not for the love of the subject. <coughs> we, are, we are here for the marks. So from whichever chapter there are more marks, there has to be a focus. So whenever I am arranging the scheme of things in the, in the explanations, I see to it that I focus on that particular element. Now look at this 2017 exam, uh, chapter 3. I really am not bothered what questions have come. I am hmm? only looking at the marks. 2017, chapter 3, paper 2, there were four questions. Okay, Four questions, one, <coughs> two questions were for 20 marks each and one question for 10 marks each. So uh, 60 marks from one chapter. Just imagine out of 250 marks, you are getting 60 marks there. You are not studying this chapter. You need not go to the exam. You can take a leave. Huh? Similarly, in 2016 paper, there were four questions almost coming to the same amount there. So we can see that you know, th this particular chapter was giving consistently about a 60 to 70 marks on, a, on an annual basis. So you should be first of all convinced. That see, I am going to get 60 marks from this chapter, so I better spend on this initially, maybe for a week or 10 days or whatever. This is one of the biggest chapters in your syllabus. Chapter 3, paper 2 is one of the biggest chapters in the syllabus. And uh, sir, most of the topics that are listed there, most of the topics that are listed there are related to the philosophical side of Hinduism. They are from the philosophical side of Hinduism. I'll have to say this here. Of course, you know, in your uh, general studies, you must have <coughs> come across several of those statistics. We have our country with so many diverse cultures and religions and languages, whatever. Sir, uh, on a regular basis, just like that, keep a couple of India maps with you in the class. India maps without the state borders, not the Indian border, no, no, state borders. Um, 
so that you have that flexibility of scribbling. States, no guarantee. Today they are there, tomorrow they are not there. We don't believe in them. So, we look at the India map. That should be there and preferably India along with the neighboring countries. Oh, enlarged India for that matter. I look at it as 1909 India from where many anthropological works have actually started in India. So, it should be incorporating uh, uh, Rangoon territory, etc. and then part of Tibet and then uh, our own uh, children like you know, Pakistan and a bit of Afghanistan, etc. So, all of them have to be there in that map, two maps you try to have. Sir, in that statement, we go back to the same chapter, chapter 3, the first statement. Once again, can you read? <coughs> Structure and nature of traditional Indian society. But what you are writing there is mostly Hindu. So, for all practical purposes, we change the statement as structure of Hindu society. Though he is saying structure of Indian society, we will be discussing mostly the Hindu philosophy. And in the process, <coughs> sir, keep going down there. In chapter 3, there is a mention of various other religions also. There is a mention of various other religions also. Chapter 3, I know. Achha. Impact of uh, Buddhism, Jainism, Islam and Christianity on Indian society. So, when you are writing that statement, you have almost equated India with Hindu. It is like India for Hindus, I did not say anything. Similarly, go to chapter 8, paper 2. Etc. on the tribal societies. Now, what I would be doing in the class tomorrow when we start, I said in the name of the God I will be starting your class. So, we would uh, first look at what is religion. Religion is actually mentioned as a separate chapter in chapter 5, paper 1. You have one complete chapter on religion. So, whenever I am doing religion, I will have to pick up from different you know, aspects of religion. So, I would first introduce God to you. Many, for many of you, God may be a surprise, God may be a shock, God may be a consolation prize kind of a thing. So, tomorrow we would try to have some idea about why God and how God and who God, etc. Uh, and I am not here to, to, to convert a theist into theist. Uh, I am talking about religion or any god or whatever because anthropology syllabus mentions them. And also I will have to say this sir, because you might be coming from some other faith other than say Hinduism, uh, initially it might be slightly irksome for you to get into the details there. They may look to be very absurd, say you are, you are a Christian, say you are a Muslim. Uh, the Hindu concepts might look to be weird. It does not matter, as long as it gives you marks. As long as you will have to get marks, you should own the things. At least for the sake of understanding, that is where I said anthropology is a discipline that helps us understand the others. Even if you would want to counter the other religions, uh, uh, you know, concepts, etc., you should know their concepts and yours. You should be able to compare, Zakir Naik kind of a thing. I am going to introduce several religious uh, speakers in the class. Actually, I nurture this dream of uh, becoming a theologist in the future. Maybe, you know, I will have many more admissions for my course than for anthropology. Because God men are the richest men these days. Every morning you have those white clad ladies, you know. Funny thing is, uh, <coughs> maybe I am an old timer, so. I do not believe in reading out speeches. Speech should come from within. Speech should come from within. Of all the things religious speeches you are reading, God is this kind of a thing. God knows what you are reading. Randomly tomorrow morning, those of you who have television, and most of us have our laptops and kind of where you know, television can be seen, live television. Just glance through various religious, Advyatmika channels. There are so many of them, God channel and various other channels. Just have a glance through them, have a feel of them. 
what they are trying to talk about in the name of God? Are they really explaining what God is? What is the basis of their philosophy? Because in the class, from tomorrow, for some time, all of us would try to be Hindus, so that we understand what a Hindu way of life is. Don't from the right, right from the first statement, don't try to start criticizing. See, uh, because if somebody is in a faith, they know why they are saying certain things. See, in anthropology, we have something called, look at chapter 8, paper 1. Chapter 8, paper 1. <clears throat> in the research methodologies, read out, sir. Read out, read out. You don't have. Somebody there. Once again, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Stop. In the tools of data collection, one word he is using called observation. This is going to take us all together to a different platform of understanding others. We are going to use a very innovative concept of anthropology. We call it participant observation. Observation is keenly watching at something. You are observing her. You're keenly watching her. Participant observation. Whatever she is doing, you are also trying to do. Very, very interesting examples we are going to have in our discipline. Until and unless you become a participant in the whole thing, you really cannot understand why they do what they do. Now, the fourth use of anthropology is to understand why we do what we do. We study anthropology because the discipline tells us why we do what we do, why they do what they do. Hannah? Very simple things and complex things also. Starting from the eating habits. We eat certain things, they eat certain things. We don't certain, but they do certain. That might look to be a small, small difference, but you know, it's a huge difference. I have a friend of mine who was, uh, who was there in my batch of the field workers. She loves the crocodile meat like a hell. And one fine day she actually said, I'm going to get a sumptuous lunch. And then she got the lunch and all. She arranged the whole platter there. And then uh, I actually love every walking, crawling you know, kind of things. But then of all the things, crocodile. <laughs> Then she says, she actually was describing how she makes a crocodile, prepares a crocodile. It is not the entire one. We only prepare the tail of it and then how the tail is actually extracted and then how you slice it nicely and kind of. The slicing art actually is so very nice to me. I love knives and then the cuttings there. But in spite of all that crocodile, <laughs> kind of a thing. So. Why we do what we do is one of the other things there. So we would be starting with uh, religion, meaning of it, how in anthropology the topic of religion had emerged, so a broader understanding there, and who are all the thinkers that were actually dealing with the topic of religion. And when it comes to India, why in the syllabus we are using India, Hindu kind of a thing, rather than equating with any other, any other religion for that matter, and kind of things out there. I work a lot on movies. More than anthropology, I work on movies. Because uh, especially in Telugu industry, we have uh, everything necessary for anthropology. Everything necessary. Any concept in anthropology can be explained through Telugu films. But now I am also working a lot on the other uh, genres also, other languages also. Hindi, do, I mean, I mean, uh, so I am also trying to work on them. Uh, so it is not simply the songs of anthropology that I provide. I also provide the film clips of uh, anthropology kind of a thing. So all those things would be. So when it comes to the online classes, whatever he is recording here, I think he would give the uh, thing. Um, 
I don't know what is the question that uh, how do you deal with, you can be more specific on that so that I can elaborate. Hmm. It's something like this, sir. If you do not want a physical presence of a teacher with you, Bhautikanga mi majjalo like a Physical presence, even if it is not necessary for you, and also, sir, traveling these days is a horrendous task in the city with so much of traffic. So, you can actually, uh, I don't think, I mean, it's a personal choice rather. It's a personal choice. But we try to do the maximum so that, you know, we uh, give the same kind of a stuff. Class recorded one will be posted to you, number one. Second thing is, uh, I am very particular about dictations. Uh, some teachers actually do not want the dictation to be aired in the video, but I am particular, dictations are also aired along with the other things. And whatever uh, printed stuff, additional stuff is there, that will also come. One major uh, question people were asking was about the doubts, how doubts of the students would be clarified. We would be placing a doubts corner on the platform where you can actually uh, type your doubts. And uh, I was saying this to somebody the other day, if the question is a shorter one, typing two, three statements would suffice to clarify your doubt, I would do that. Uh, and suppose the question needs elaborate explanation, I would prefer to do that in the class so that other students are also benefited. No, but then if you want a very private, intimate talk, then maybe I would you know, uh, call you and then I would try to clarify your doubt. You know, that, that's how things are. And then suppose somebody is there in Hyderabad nearby, you, know, you are an online student, once in a while you want to make a darshan, then you are most welcome. You know? Take a Uh, <clears throat> see, one more thing students were asking whether some in online, some in offline, I don't get into all that. That's a management thing. No, I'm only a teacher here. Or so, any other questions, queries, problems? Generally, I buy a time of about 15 days for any script. So within 15 days of time, it should reach you. That's my target, actually. Compared to? That's the question there. <laughs> Every optional subject, I think it has got his own vocabulary. No? It might be quite new to you because you must not have studied. If you are a civil engineer and now you are studying anthropology, that looks to be very different. But then, uh, hmm, it has got its own vocabulary. It's like, you know, maybe learning a Chinese language now, kind of. How, sir, any other questions? Initially, we won't, but eventually we will. Uh, may not be every Saturday, Sunday, but we try to make you get occupied so that you won't say that, see, I have a break. <coughs> Breaks have to be properly used, actually. The five days of court, uh, class that we have that need some kind of an extra work on the weekends. If a student properly understands the meaning of a break on the weekend, so uh, it's not like, you know, you are wailing away, but then... But then we try to see to it that you are kept busy on Saturdays, Sundays. No, no. I don't expect you to do any kind of a research beforehand. My problem is that uh, you might learn it in a wrong way. Unlearning becomes very difficult. That's the reason why I prefer clean slates rather than scribbled ones. Even if you must have studied some anthropology before, first you empty that at home. Come with an empty brain. So that uh, slots are available so that I fill in. Otherwise, there will be overflowing and whatever I am putting will not go inside. Or Personally, also, you have any problems with me, you can tell me. 
language problem, explanation problem, that problem, this problem, you can tell me. Eventually, your own personal problems will also be dealt with. <laughs> Marriage, counseling, divorce, etc., etc. I have a parallel uh, matrimonial thing also. I can help you out. Cadder marriages, service marriages, whatever. Huh? We are also going to study gay marriages in the class, don't worry. Uh, <coughs> I got an invite recently from one of my students. Same gay marriage. I thought whom to take along with me. <laughs> Because in a society like India, you may not have many audiences there. Being an anthropology teacher, I have to be there. <laughs> but when uh, struggle comes between the faith and the culture, there the problem arises. So that is going to be one of the issues we are going to talk in the class. Where we should go, whether we should go by faith or by culture. Have a good time, sir. See you tomorrow. <laughs>